Today, we are telling you what Xbox needs to do to get back in the game now that their Xbox showcase is coming up. This is a historic moment for Xbox. Mm -hmm. We're posting this episode a day early so that people can have time to get this and think about it. So yeah, we're talking about not just what we think they will do, but what they should do based right. on our experience of being in this position. Exactly, yeah, they, they need to do some things to really get going and seize the moment. Do something, do, hot tip. Do something, do a thing, <laughs> won't you? Um, so yeah, we're gonna talk about it all today, which is gonna be really fun. As always, everything in this podcast on this channel is made possible by our wonderful Patreon subscribers. Thank you so much for continuing to support us. If you'd like to support us, we are at patreon.com slash Kit and Krista. We just uh, did an incredible video that was really fueled by our Patreon subscribers, which is our Vista contest, where we got over 100 Vista submissions and Tears of the Kingdom. That was uh, amazing. All from our Patreon subscribers. And wow, those submissions... Blew us away. Totally. So you are hard the to Vista pick a winner. King. I am the Vista King. Do you feel your position as king has been challenged by these great Vista submissions? No, as I said, I'll keep the big big crown and the winner can get the smaller crown. You better step up your Vista game. Someone's gonna overthrow you. Someone's gonna A Vista revolt? They're gonna usurp your Vista crown if you don't step oh, up no. your game. The Vista imprisoning war is upon us, <laughs> is nigh. You gotta hear it four <laughs> times first. <laughs> Let me tell you once Whose again. Whose arm will be holding me Let down? Let me tell you once again about the imprisoning war. <laughs> but anyways, um, it was really fun. We even had a wonderful Patreon member donate the yes. Tears of the Kingdom collector, Collector's Edition as the prize. So as you said, it was like the full ecosystem of wonderful Patreon community love. Right. And that's the best thing. That's, that's why we're doing this. We love um, just hanging out with you guys all the time in our Discord, giving you guys lots of bonus content. Yeah, we just love it. It's great. We have five great tiers with all sorts of different exclusive stuff you can get. We also have a free tier now, which is a good way to get your foot in the door. Check it out. So give it a look. Yeah, give it a look. The other thing that we are continuing to thrive and strive towards, did that make sense? Maybe not, is um, going to Japan this year. That's right. And making lots of great content in Japan for all of you. So if you'd like to help us donate to the Japan Fund. The thermometer, once again, is right here. You can do that through Super Thanks and Super Chat right here on YouTube, if that is where you're watching this video. Keep seeing people going to Japan say, when we go, it's gonna be incredible. Yes. We're gonna blow it off. And uh, yeah, we have so many ideas, so many places we gotta go, so many people we wanna meet up with that exactly. we haven't been able to talk with or, or get on uh, a Kit and Krista video, but it's gonna happen when we go there. Exactly, yeah. yeah. I, I think we're really excited for all of the cool content we're planning for Japan. So yeah, help us get there and we'll, um, we'll definitely be making lots of great stuff for you guys. Yeah. All right, let's take a quick look at what is on the channel and what is coming up. Uh, as I mentioned, the Vista, Tears of the Kingdom Vista video is up. I will not reveal the winner. No. That's a spoiler. You should watch the video though. Yeah. And 10 incredible submissions that will make you appreciate Narrowed this game. Narrowed down from 100 submissions, oh which my was gosh. quite the feat by the Vista King. Yeah. Put some work and in. And get some tips on how to take better screenshots uh, in the game yourself. Uh, yeah. In that video right there. And in a, in a first time ever, we got Vista videos, which was a, a surprise and delight to all of us. Great innovations mm -hmm. in Vistas. The world is truly moving it's forward. moving forward. Uh, we also have a video uh, reacting to the news of the Everybody 1-2 Switch announcement. We don't have this in our news section today because we did the whole video on it. Yeah. And yeah. that's kind of about how with this game being announced and kind of looking at what the circumstances around this game were, it's like, eh, the, the Switch is moving into a different phase of its life right now. It's, yeah. it's, it's deep golden years. It's in the retirement home probably. Yeah. yeah we're, we're definitely moving into um, the golden years for Switch and also moving into this you know, transition period. So it should be interesting. We should all be enjoying the Switch while we can and, you know, getting kind of getting ready for what's next, which is going to be Yeah, fun. you can start to think about that a little bit. Exactly. So you can check that out if you want to see how we felt about that. And then this week, again, we're posting this podcast a day early because this is a big week for us. This is probably, you know, E3 is gone, but this is this week is like the closest we are going to get Yeah, to and it definitely is starting to feel a bit more 
like E3, last year we did go to Summer Game Fest and it was wonderful and we saw so many cool games and so many unexpected games. Um, this year it definitely feels bigger to me. There's yes. so many other events in and around Summer Game Fest. Summer Game Fest itself is bigger as well and we have you know, a full schedule of stuff that we're doing and vlogging and, and filming for all you guys. So it's going to be a busy weekend. It definitely feels very E3. -like. Yeah. Yeah. So there's kind of the Summer Game Fest live stream, which Jeff Keighley is hosting. Yep. We'll be doing a live reaction for that mm -hmm. on Thursday. You are going to LA a day before me yes. on Wednesday to go to a special event, kind of leading, it's it's around, Summer Game Fest is like a loosely organized series of events. Yeah, and that's what kind of what E3 started feeling like too, like lots of other companies yeah. did things in and around right. the timing of E3, but I am going, I will be the, the Kit and Krista representative at, at this other event that I'm personally very, very excited about. Mm -hmm. So that will be in our Summer Game Fest vlog. Yep. Um, and then we are going to the play days. Right. So Thursday, I'm kind of managing our stream from home. You'll be you'll be connecting in remotely. And yes. then right after that, I go you to the, hop an airplane. I, I go to the air, aeroplane. The aeroplane. I get on an aeroplane and fly down to Los <laughs> Angeles because first thing Friday through Saturday, we're going to be at this Play Days yes. event, which is also part, this is officially part of Summer Game Fest. And that's right. the same event that we went to last year. But this does feel like there's more yeah. companies there, mm -hmm. more people attending it to see these games. Yeah. Still, it's not, it's not a public event, but it does feel like it's gotten bigger. Absolutely. And I'm excited. I think we have lots of really fun appointments lined up to see yeah. some new games. Um, we had a great time last year. And again, I, I just, you know, go in with very little expectations and I'm sure we'll find a game or two or three that will surprise us that we didn't have on our radar. That's the best part. There are some games that we wanted appointments for that we didn't get that we're going to crash. We're just going to show up. <laughs> get ready what, for us, people. What are you going to do when I walk through that door? When you blast <laughs> through those I doors. down this door. Show me the fill in the blank. <laughs> I will not say what it is. We did, we did get an appointment for a game that we we're both really excited about, though. Uh, extremely. When that, uh, email, again, when that email came through, yes. we, had, we both exchanged <laughs> OMG, 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 uh, finally emails to each other. So. It's maybe not the game you think, but it's a game that we we're both no, it is, mega hyped for. It is, it is game of the year. Mega, Go, mega, Goaty, mega. Goaty potential. So... Like I said, yeah. we're there through Saturday. Then we come back catch, home. Catch another aeroplane <laughs> back up here coming north to be ready Sunday morning. Yeah. The Xbox Game Showcase mm -hmm. and the Starfield Direct. So this is a packed week. It's a packed week. It's going to be fun, though. Yeah. I'm excited. I feel like this is... We used to measure our like the seasons and the time through gaming events. True. And E3 was always our start of summer. Now, aptly named Summer Game Fest is our start of summer. I don't believe it's technically summer, though. I know, but I don't care. It's like, it's like in my brain, it's like summer. Jeff Keighley, explain yourself. Jeff Keighley. Spring, late change, spring game fest. Change the equinox <laughs> of the universe, please, Jeff Keighley. You know you can. Um, but yeah, it just feels like the beginning of a new season, mm -hmm. SEN. And it's, it's cool. It feels good. It feels fun. You know? I'm yeah. excited about it. And again, it. all of that is why we're releasing this episode a day early. Yes. So much more to come. So hopefully you'll come join us uh, for all yes, those streams we have coming up here. Us. Here are our reactions. And uh, yeah, we can take it all in together. Yeah. Yeah. So speaking of it being E3 feeling-ish, mm. we've got uh, a fun little bookend of, of story times from E3 2019 that we want to get into. Yeah. But first, I want to say this episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Thank you, BetterHelp. Thank you. You know, in a week, you spend a lot of time on other people. Certainly yes. me to you. Oh, really? A lot. I spent a lot of time. Not feeling on Serving you, fulfilling your requests. <laughs> what kind of requests? Bringing you a hot cup of coffee, whatever it may be. <laughs> But you need to spend some time on yourself. So you need to find a way to achieve balance. You do. That is actually harder than it sounds a lot of times because you, I feel like a lot of people, me, myself included, I don't realize how much I've given away during the week to other people or yeah. to other responsibilities and have totally neglected to really take time to, um, to look after myself as well, which is very important. Because if you have an empty cup, 
cannot fill another person's cup. You see? Yeah, it like we work. like we just said, it's been a very busy time for us. We're getting get ready for all these events. We're going on this trip. I have a vacation coming up. I've been getting ready for. Every night I will sit down, play some Zelda for a couple hours, and kind of recharge, recharge yeah. myself. So that's yeah. very important. And that is exactly the kind of thing that a better help therapist can help you work out. Exactly. And sometimes you do need that like impartial person mm -hmm. to really kind of look at your life, look at your situation from a, a different perspective and help you find that balance and give you great advice and BetterHelp is a perfect way to do that. They have licensed therapists. You can match up to them very easily by taking an online quiz. You can talk to your therapist all sorts of different ways, whether it's with text, on the phone, video, whatever you need. However you're feeling that day, you can reach your therapist and talk to them so you can achieve some balance. So convenient, so flexible, so great. You should all check it out. We certainly use it ourselves. So find more balance with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash Kit and Krista today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash Kit and Krista. Yes, the link is right over here and also in the description below. All right. All right. So we're in the E3 feelings. Story time. So this is from E3 2019, the last proper E3, E3. that we went to. Um, so we we did something at that E3 that we had wanted to do for many 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 years mm -hmm. and had either put off or had been told not to do. No, yeah. And this year we just we just kind of put our foot down. We're like, no, we're doing this, and that is road tripping. To E3. Yeah, yeah. We made a lot of videos. Um, we started to make a lot of videos around E3, and we really ratcheted up the amount of Nintendo Minute videos we were doing around the time of E3 because it's just so much going on. Yeah. So we would do like daily vlogs, poor producer Stephanie and edit editor Hannah, but we would do like crazy things like that. And we wanted to do something special for 2019 E3. I don't know why we, I'm really glad we did it because that was the last proper E3. The last chance. And the last chance we could have done it. Yeah. So maybe there was a little voice inside us saying like, we knew. do it now or yeah. else you'll miss the chance forever. So listen to those little voices inside you because you don't want to miss a chance to do something that you've wanted to do. And I'm, I think it was really fun and it made it feel like really different and special that year as well. So, yeah. So like you said, we had been thinking of doing this for a long time because we thought it would just be, you know, a fun content opportunity, but also like going to LA, it's like, well, it's just an hour away, but it's really not like yeah. there's like, well, I got to drive to the airport. I'm sitting around, I'm getting on the mm -hmm. plane. Maybe that'll be delayed. Yeah. Fly down. LAX is a crazy airport. Maybe you're sitting on the tarmac for another hour. Yeah. Get out. Now you have to like walk a half hour to get to like where you a get, shuttle where you get like whatever, a, an Uber, Uber or a Lyft or a whatever. Yeah. And then it's like, well, now I'm sitting in LA traffic. So like the, this like quote 45 minute flight becomes this like multi, multi, multi hour. Yeah. Thing which is uh, sometimes annoying. It can be a little grueling. So sometimes. we're like, well, let's you know, let's let's just do this at our pace. Uh, that trip is what's it like six Five and a half, six, six to seven ish hours, depending on what time traffic, you leave yeah. in the day. Yeah, and um, we'll film along the way. Right. There's like some some really fun little like stops along the way that we wanted to just go to because we like them. Right. Like the fruit stand, like Casa de Fruta is fun. Um, the pea soup place. Right. Yeah, we like we wanted to just do it at our own pace, you yeah. know? And we had floated this before. And some people were like, yeah, that sounds cool. But other people were like, oh, I don't know about this. Like, You need to be available you, all hours yeah, Exactly. Of the day. Like, what if something happens? Like, we're, we're down to the wire. We're, like, finalizing things. We need to find you I don't somewhere. think this is a good use yeah. of your time. Yeah. But... How did this get approved? I, I don't even remember anymore. Did we just ask for forgiveness? Is I took the initiative myself. You did? did you really? I seized I don't life remember. in my own hands. I remember getting something you'd never think denied of. Denied doing no. this a couple of times. That's when we had different bosses. Years before. Yeah. But this year I, I felt like we were just like, we're going to, we're driving to LA, see y'all later. And no one said anything to us. Right. The like. year before I was the E3 lead. So perhaps people felt some amount of pity for me and was like, all right, that was a year ago. Oh. You don't have that huge burden this year. So do like, what, go do, do what, you, what want. you want. Right. Okay. Maybe it was, maybe that maybe was, it was something maybe like that. Maybe that was it. I don't know. Yeah. But, but we anyways, did. Anyways, we got a, we got it approved somehow. Right. So one of the one of the kind of logistical things was like, all right, going 
driving down to E3, that's fun. You're, you're, you're ready to go. You got excitement. Uh, <laughs> you got you energy. Have, you have energy, but like, yeah. we don't want to drive back. No, that that Friday when you come back <laughs> from E3 is when your body completely breaks down. Yeah. So I for like. 10 years of doing E3, that Friday when I come back is either, is a make or break. That is the decision day. <laughs> like if you are able to make it through the night, the dark night of post E3, you will be okay. You will not get sick. <laughs> you will be okay. I don't know but about if that. you cannot make it through the dark night of Friday of E3 and you don't do everything in your power to like try to replenish your body, you will be sick for two months later, like right. two months afterwards. So, so that was the pro move of how we did yeah. this. We rented a car at the San Francisco airport and then we found a way to drop it off. In downtown LA. In, in like so close. It was like walking distance to from our the hotel. hotel. It, it was great. Yeah. yeah. So that that was a major, major key. Yeah. And then we flew back. Right. Is, exactly. Is we the flew idea. back. Yeah. So we left at like, we left pretty early. Nine-ish. I was like maybe eight. Yeah, somewhere between eight and nine. Yeah, we were, we were like, we, it was perfect. And we hit the road and like 80% of that drive is I-5, which is just yeah. the, straight the longest, straightest, like most boring. It's like, it's really there's boring. like nothing on this road. There is that lake. On the way there that looks like the Triforce, remember? Oh, Pyramid Lake. Pyramid Lake. I always wonder about that. We should go back there one That day. can't be a naturally occurring No, it's got to be like a reservoir. But it looks like, it, it's like a, another one of those like locations out of yeah. Hyrule. Yeah, once you once you see that, you know you're getting You're getting close. Like, are you're getting, getting close, close. To, to LA, to, to Southern California. Yeah. Um, but one of the, we, we made a fun stop at a, I would say it's like a, a California it's tourist like a, landmark. It's a landmark, yeah. Which is the Anderson Pea, Pea Soup. Soup Restaurant. Oh my God, it's so, like the best thing so ever. So if you don't guys. know, if you're, if you're road tripping up and down California, like somehow this restaurant has billboards every 15 minutes. Yeah, it's one of those things where it's like five more miles to pea soup, and yeah. you're like, I'm getting so hungry now for pea soup. They have a couple locations and the one that we went to was like right as you get on the I-5. I think there's one that's kind of more a like central, central California. Yeah. And I, I, I've done a lot of California road trips in my day. I, I had never been there. Yeah, yeah. It was my first time going there as well. I've always, always heard about it too. Mm -hmm. And you always see the signs when you drive to LA. Right. Like anytime you drive to LA, you'll see those tr um, signs. But I never stopped in. But we went in. And they have, um, you can get pea soup in a bread bowl with unlimited All you can refills. Eat. Yeah, it's amazing. so amazing. Oh my gosh. Split pea soup is legit. It's legit yeah. delicious. And that soup was so good. Right. How many bowls did you have? I think you had um, two maybe bowls. Maybe two. Two bowls. I mean, that's a lot of soup. A lot of soup. <laughs> Plus a loaf of bread <laughs> and it's in? Come on. Yeah, they have a cute little gift shop there too. You yeah. can get your pea soup souvenirs. Sadly, so sadly, we could not include that in our video. We might have that footage still somewhere. Yeah, I we definitely have it, but, and I think producer Stephanie tried to sneak it in. I know, but legal would never yeah, allow oh, oh, this. Absolutely not. We cannot, this we cannot Nintendo endorse. Nintendo is sponsored by pea soup. Yeah, we cannot endorse this pea soup. Hashtag ad. Right. But I remember it, um, while we were there, I took a phone call in the parking lot from the ninjas. You did. I remember that. They, we were, it was we were a working scary on, day. We were working on something. To, I don't know. You were terrified. I was terrified. I'm on great terms with the ninjas. You are, but yeah. um, it was a serious call. Right. Like you needed, there was like, you know, a, a, again, in the lead up to E3, there's a lot of worry about right. leaks and a lot of so, locking the, battening down the hatches, right. as they say in sailing. So if... Again, if people were saying, oh, oh, you can't get anything done on this trip. I just did. Yeah. So take that. You drove the whole way and I like monitored the emails and it was generally fine. You're a bit of a shaky truck. I'm not. Is this all That's can, not true. Well, first of all, you can barely see over the wheel. I, okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I could get like a little booster seat. That's a true. And we had kind of a, the game was kind of a big like SUV. It was kind of nice though. So. Yeah. It was easy to film. We had like a, yeah. put our GoPro up and got all set, you know, and right. the car. The, right. that, that was the, the origin of Always Be Funny as well, I believe. Was it? I think so. <clears throat> okay, yeah. I mean, you like to leave notes to I leave, yourself. I leave a lot of notes to myself. <clears throat> and yeah. I happened to stumble upon them. You're and rifling it, and it around your, in my stuff. Your personal theme for this E3 was ABF, which ABF, said for Always Be Funny. Always Be Funny. So it's a good theme, you guys. I guess that's your continuing, Hashtag ABF. continuing life motto. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, I'll be honest, the last like 10% of that drive was kind of a slog because we did yeah, hit. We like, did hit the grapevine early, traffic. Early, early traffic, early rush hour traffic. Yeah. Um, 
but we made it. We had some like, you know, it's like, oh no, you pick a song. Now you pick a song. <laughs> we did some oh, of that. Yeah, to we, we, we were like, we had time. a playlist. We yeah. had a great road trip playlist. Exactly. Uh, and then we made it, and it became a great video, so there was no trouble at all. So again, people who were saying, oh, you can't do this, absolutely can. You're wrong. Because I had heard, from, there, I'd heard from a lot of people in the industry who, have, who had done this too, and I was kind oh, of really? inspired by them. Oh, I was I've like, never heard I got, of we got to do this sometime. So I think we even talked about doing it for the Summer Game Fest too. Yeah, but one, then it, one day. It turned the out timing you had to, is too yeah. tough this time. Yeah, you had to be there a day earlier, so it didn't yeah. work out. But I think, yeah. I think there would be more road trips uh, in our future. I think so. It's fun to do. I do like road trips. I think right. it's really fun. So um, then there's there's the other bookend to this story. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So Which you we, want you you just you, you said really we have to tell, to this, tell story. this story. We um, we get to E three, everything is fine. We're you know doing the show stuff. You know, now E three. I don't know. This is like a little bit of a tangent, but there was always this really like high pressure conversation and expectation about the E three wardrobe. Mm. You know what well, I mean? Well, who, who made it that way? Was it wasn't it, me. I think it was you. It wasn't me. Oh, my God. It was not me. It, I don't know what happened, but there, it, this, like, started sort of on the, on our small team. Like, you know, we, we are, whether you're on camera or you're, you know, all the time or you're meeting with a lot of press or celebrities or whatever, you don't want to look like a slob. You know, at yeah. E three, it is, a, and all the executives are there yeah. as well. You do, you do need to dress up a little bit. You more do need to dress usual. up a little bit more than usual. You can't just like roll in in like your everyday clothes. Yeah. But I don't know what happened. Like over the years, this got more and more like high pressured. Where it's like, what are you wearing at E three? What does that E three wardrobe look like? Give me your day to day. Like all the girls. Well, you would like go shopping on the weekend with with my boss, who was our like department lead. We're like, oh, we got to get these E three outfits. Yeah, we the, all of us would go shopping together. Right. Like, we would just go and like pick out these outfits, and then we would like have these like very complicated <laughs> spreadsheets. <laughs> spreadsheets. Oh no. And like and we had like a whole routine where we would like go and like put the clothes in the order with the shoes and the all your accessories, and then like me and this other uh, one of my uh, other coworkers. Um, we would go and like try to get our like breakfast and food sorted for the week. So we would go and like to get like um, pressed juices for the whole week because you can get sick so easily. Yeah. You got to like take care of yourself. So there was a whole routine around clothes and whatever that was like a big deal. And then somehow like, it bled over to like everybody that was at E3, like including the Reggies and the Dugs and the execs, like, they're like, oh, we gotta, can you find me this stuff? Like, yeah. can you find me this particular shirt so I can wear this? And, and these Vans shoes, like, it became a huge deal right. somehow. I don't know what happened. It's fine. I mean, 95% of the year, we're all dressed like schlubs, so. Speak for yourself. It's, uh, I mean, it's Not fine. me. It's fine to have, you know, one week a year where it's like oh, everyone looks look, look kind presentable. of decent and presentable yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I always look presentable right. but yes it, but the the point of the story is that everyone went out and bought new clues, clothes you included right but I had a clothing snafu yes so this happened I think on the Wednesday and it's a good thing this happened on Wednesday because kind of the way E3 works is everything we would get there on, I would get there on a Friday yeah so everything through Tuesday through the end of Tuesday was really like hardcore yeah because that was like all right we have some you know because Tuesday was always the well Tuesday the, was the um, first day the direct and the direct but leading up to that there were like events that were happening like important yeah. meetings like prep where like all the global That's teams the, were getting together yeah actually the Friday through the Tuesday were the worst. And then Wednesday exactly. and Thursday are like real chill. Those were kind of a breeze. Yeah. So thank goodness this happened to me on Wednesday. This happened to me Wednesday afternoon. So <laughs> I don't know when exactly it happened or how. but I, I know got, how. I got a tap. You know how. I know. I can pinpoint the moment exactly. I how. got a tap on the shoulder. And it was one of the booths. It was basically like Reggie's security bodyguard. bodyguard. Who would, by the way, the... Bodyguards that they had for like Reggie and Mr. Miyamoto were literally the nicest, sweetest people ever. I miss them. I hope they're right. I hope they're doing right. well. To be clear, Reggie does not have like a 24-7, 365 things in your bodyguard. This is just for And E3. also it was always really hard to find Reggie a bodyguard because yeah. he's like um, <laughs> Reggie massive. can bodyguard himself. He can bodyguard himself. He can bodyguard all of us. <laughs> but somehow we found someone that could bodyguard Reggie. Right. I don't know. So I mean we we were all just in the booth with this person again over several years, so we came to know him pretty well. Yeah. So so sweet. So he came up behind me very quietly, tapped me on the shoulder. He's like, hey, you split your pants. <laughs> <laughs> and it was 
like, again, it's like Wednesday afternoon. People are feeling good. It's like, surely this is a prank or some sort of a joke or something. <laughs> and also, you know him so well, so it's not like yeah. some, you know, it wasn't like. Right. He could be joking. If like you. a stranger walked up to me and said that, I'd be like, oh no, <laughs> what's going on? Uh, and I was like, oh yeah, good one. He's like, no, I mean it. <laughs> <laughs> and I kind of like, oh no. Did you feel bad? Yeah, then? I did. And you, your hand went into your underpants? Uh, yeah, it did. Uh oh. <laughs> went into my underpants, as you say. Oh no. And, uh, so, so, so how did this happen in your, in your wisdom? How I'm going to post the picture right, right here of the moment this happened. Because what? We, you and I went to take a photo in front of the Lynx Awakening area. Okay. And there was a little link in the in the shot, and we were like, "Let's scoot da squat down, so we're the same oh. height as little Link." Yeah. And take this photo, and you squatted, like full on. Yeah. Squat. Uh oh. And uh, I think that's when it happened. Shouldn't do that in dress pants. See? I think those pants were like, um, yeah, they were like not like stretch, like no, jeans. No, it's not jeans. Or, or, or like, yeah. you know, any sort of pants with like stretch. Right, right. I, I guess maybe you don't wear stretchy pants. I don't know. Um, but it was like, you know, like slacks. Right. So, of course. <laughs> Uh-oh, there it goes. <laughs> and it was it was dicey because, so this was maybe like 4 o'clock, and I think it like, again, when the, sh when the floor closed, we had our end of day meeting that I had to be at. Because I think I had to present something. So <laughs> get taped your pants shut. It was like, what do I do about this? And like, B, like I can't be going into this big meeting with like a giant hole in the in my butt. <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> just be quite blunt about it. <laughs> so like, what the am I going to do? The meeting is pretty big too. It's like it's probably a hundred people in there. Yes, and it's yeah. like all the all the big people. It's all the regions, every region. Yeah, I don't want. They have would laugh. Another they tap on the shoulder. Oh, oh, kits on. <laughs> They will it's point like, in. I know. You could have. Did, did you put your jacket around your waist? I and scurry back to. the I hotel? think I did. I, I had something like a, a sweater or a jacket or like my my bag. I was able to strategically position that, and I like waddled back to the hotel. <laughs> Good thing the hotel's across the. It's we, like really close. We stayed very close, very walking distance. So I was this able to hustle back, change change me pants, <laughs> and be back in time to do the meeting. I was wondering what happened to you because you had, you had <laughs> <laughs> you disappeared for like like maybe like forty five minutes yeah. something like that, and I was like, what happened to Kit? <laughs> uh, so the lesson is uh, don't go commando in oh my god in, uh, in an unusual in a strange outfit that you're not comfortable with. Do you have a, I was like, not doing that like cartoon like bl white polka dot. Heart, big big red hearts on big it. Big red hearts. Yeah. yeah. It's none of your business <laughs> what it is. But uh yeah. Wearing like the um the pajamas with the the flap, the button flap. The button flap. <laughs> Were you? Hon Underneath? Honestly, the pants? It, it wasn't great, but honestly it could have been a lot worse. You're so lucky a that person worse. told you discreetly yeah. and, and quickly. Yeah. Like he was that was a goat move right there. <laughs> Seriously, like <laughs> looking out for me. Looking out, looking out for Reggie. L literally and figuratively. Looking out for your looking pants. Looking out. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> looking out for all of us. You're out there. Yeah. I'm sending you great good thoughts. <laughs> so that's the story. Oh man, that's funny. Interesting that and really fun funny. stuff. So let's get into something more serious. Our never a minute segment is all about the Xbox Game Showcase and the Starfield Direct, which is happening this Sunday. 10 a.m. Pacific. They have had this on their calendar for a really long a month, time. Maybe over yeah. a month. A long time. They have they they announced it very early. And again, this feels like a. There are no true make or break moments, but this kind of feels like one yeah, for them right now. Kind of similar to what we were talking about, you know, when we were thinking about what could happen in the PlayStation Showcase. It's like these are big upcoming moments for these other companies that are not Nintendo to like really like solidify themselves as like a force for the right. rest of the year. You know, they could really snatch some of that attention, um, some of people's interest and mind share um, if they play their cards right for these kind of big moments. Yeah, and I mean, it's been a very shaky year for them so far. So, yeah. Yeah. you know, on that, from that standpoint, they want to start to get the ship back on track. You know, right. Phil Spencer had that wild interview with kind of funny. Right, right. I'm sure he is really... Feeling I, I'm the sure, pressure. I'm sure this team is feeling a lot of pressure to yeah. deliver on this. But the silver lining is there is a big opportunity here because the PlayStation event did not knock 
people's socks off. Right. So, so they, they have a, a window of opportunity. Right. Got Switch in the retirement home. PlayStation is feeling... Yeah. It's not like... It's fine. It's fine, but not like out of it, this it, world. It, it did not up or down, like change their trajectory. Right. But this is... Like, this is their window. This right. is the window of opportunity. You have Summer them. Game Fest just before this, but honestly, that's, like, probably, like, a lot of the stuff is going to be on Xbox anyway. So yeah. that's kind of, like, a nice lead-in. Lead-in, right. Lead-in for them. And, you know, people... You know, people would always talk about like, oh, who won E3? And it's like, it's like, it's harder to do that now, but there, there will mm. still be those kinds of discussions of like yeah. coming out of this June period, like who really who has helped their position or hurt their position or, or did nothing. Yeah. And it really does set you up for what is going to happen during the holiday time. That's yeah. the whole point of E3 in the first place or that this June timing is that it sets you up for success um, when it really matters when you make money. <laughs> so... Right. This is the moment, kind of. Yeah. So <clears throat> I, I didn't go back and rewatch all of their annual showcases, but my feeling on these is like they've had the last couple years have been kind of like B level. Yeah. Yeah. They, like they've been fine. You know, they've had some good stuff, but they haven't necessarily knocked my socks off. Right. So I think they're probably thinking of like, well, how can we take, you know, what we've done in the years past and take mm -hmm. it up another level? And this is a unique year for them too, because I think they have like in the past couple of showcases and also at like TGAs, they've had a lot of like teaser-like announcements yes. for a lot of big games mm -hmm. and a lot of franchises that people are anticipating um, a comeback. And this might, this this showcase is well positioned timing-wise, I think, for them to really like solidify a yeah. lot of those teases. Yeah. Which could be really cool right. if they can do that, you know? So like we were saying, we are doing kind of like both what we think they need to do yeah. to have the best showing possible, mm -hmm. kind of what we would do if we were in charge of running this show, uh, which we've done in the past at Nintendo, yeah. and kind of more realistically what we think they will actually do. Because who right. knows, maybe, you know, what we think they should do may not be what they, what, what they will actually and do. And what's if possible, that make, if what that makes might sense. not be possible, yeah. So I just want to start by saying like what, you know, in terms of what they need to do, they really need to understand what their problem is. You cannot address a problem if you don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I would just boil down their problem most fundamentally to it's broken promises is what yeah. it is. You know, they, they'll show a game, they'll, they'll, they'll make a promise, make a claim about the game. Last year, their, their claim was everything you see here is going to be out in the next year. Yeah. And a lot of it was, a lot of it wasn't. Yeah, yeah. So, and it... it this is, you know, boils down to the games too. It's like, oh, well, here's this game and it's coming out this date. Well, either they miss the date or there's some feature that they have to change or is missing or mm -hmm. like, for example, with Redfall, the game is not that good. Yeah. So it just, I think the fan base just feels burned because right. it's like you cannot deliver on anything you are saying. Mm -hmm. some, of the, some of the broken promises are more egregious than others, but across the board, like you are not doing what you are promising. Right, right. I think there's only, you have like, kind of like a three strike or even less with people these right. days on how much they how much leeway they will give you if you continue to do something like this. Right. I would think like I would say like another thing that I see sort of coupled with this promise breaking or expectation management or whatever we want to call it is their quality control is like really they need to like buckle that down. Yeah. And I think in that Phil kind of funny interview, he did really recognize that as a problem. Like these studios that they've acquired just do not have the processes in place to really like put out the quality software that their fans are expecting. Yeah. So like whatever comes next, you know, in this world with their, their, they're announcing that the after Redfall debacle, like it needs to be like, Top-notch quality. Well, that's scary for them when their next game is Starfield, which is like Bethesda's like it's the, it's a meme that their games are just janky from day one. I, know. I mean, they have there's a lot to like in those games, but they're just jank. But that is that is a, a problem that is a must address. Right. I think people are tired of it, and people are not going to stand for it anymore. Yeah. So, in terms of the broken promises, I think something they absolutely have to do in here is like be really careful about what they're saying and what they're promising to yeah. be sure that they can actually deliver on it. So in that case, like it may be a less is more kind of approach where it's like, yeah, we're not going to make these statements about these games that are really far out mm -hmm. because we want to, you know, have this relationship 
with our fans, where they trust us, they believe us. And you know what we say is something that actually happens because the further afield you get, the more risk there is of something going haywire.、Mm-hmm. So I would be really focused on that if I was in their shoes. Yeah, they typically had、um, a strategy of like almost like the Marvel strategy, where you announce things really, really far、yeah. in advance. They they do have the tendency to do that. I feel like. Their thinking around the strategy there is like you want to keep people on the hook, you、mm-hmm. know, for the 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 dangly glitter that's in the future, far future.、Right. But yeah, I think if you want to lock down the quality stuff, you want to lock down just making sure people are getting what you promise that you'll be delivering. Like you should be shortening those announcement cycles. Yeah. So in that vein, one prediction I I think. I'll I'll make, and I, I'm curious how you feel about this game. Is I don't think we see the Elder Scrolls Six.、Mm. Um, that game seems extremely far out. You know, Bethesda's you know their next big game is a big Bethesda game. It's kind of like that problem that we were talking about with Final Fantasy, where it's like don't, don't want to split. Don't the step focus. On, don't again. Like people people love Elder Scrolls. People don't know what Starfield is, so don't step on that game、mm-hmm. by dangling this this game that's far off in the future. Yeah, and. If there's any game where you're at a risk of like what you say today not being true in a year, it's probably it's probably that. Probably that. So、yeah. you're like, let's just not touch it. Yeah, yeah, that's a good strategy for them to avoid falling into these pitfalls like they have in the past. But I really don't think they will. So, so do you think that game will be there? I think that game will be there. In what form? Teaser. Another CG trailer. Another CG trailer. <gasps> oh no! You can't do that. I, I think they're gonna do it though because they can't like get out from they're like get, they can't get out of their own way of wanting to dangle these kinds of carrots for people, but I don't think they should. Yeah, this is like what you said about you know before when we were talking about the PlayStation stuff.、It's、like I don't think they should、right. do this, but I think they will. Right. Okay. Another kind of big, just fundamental thing that I think they need to do <clears throat> is really clearly communicate. What the Xbox proposition is right now, and、yeah. what what makes this platform unique, and and give players some really like tangible proof points on that, because it is weird how when this system was coming out, the talking point was this is the most powerful game console ever,、mm-hmm. and pretty quickly they moved away from that, and、right. now it, and it's like it it is kind of unclear what the proposition is like. It's the Game Pass machine. Yeah, it kind of seems to be where it's settled. Yes, I think it's like the streaming Game Pass. So I want them to tell me, like,、yeah. really clearly, like, lay it out, because I think you. This is where I think a lot of the the breakdowns are happening, because the fans are like, yeah, we want the power, we want to compete with PlayStation. Yeah. And they moved on. Like Phil said that in the kind of funny interviews, like, I can't, I can't out console PlayStation. Right. It's kind of a shocking thing to to say, honestly.、Uh, for for Xbox. When when、is. like two years ago you were saying this is the most powerful game console、yeah. ever made. So what are you doing then? Yeah, exactly. We we saw a lot of this. Kind of communication confusion around、um, Wii U and and like that strategy of like not being able to clearly communicate to people what the why you would want to buy this, what the proposition of this thing is, was a huge like lead weight on that console from day one. Yeah, and then we saw that completely change with Switch because it was so easy to communicate. Yeah, from the, the message for that from. Like, Play anywhere, play anywhere, anytime, any, any, with it, yeah, any game, anywhere, with anybody, whatever it was. Yeah, that, it that was message has been consistent. The clearest message,、yeah. day one, everyone in the room got it. Anytime, anywhere, with anybody. That's what it is. Yes,、yeah. you can say it now. <laughs>、um, but, but I think that's like a huge thing for them. You know,、yes. like、they, they, they're falling into the the Wii U communication hole where you can't. Like you're like it does this, but also that, and like it can do these five other things. It's like no, I need you to tell me why I'm playing on this、yeah. console. And the, and the PS5 has a very clear proposition too.、Yeah. A, it is power, power plus ultra ultra premium first party games. Re- exactly.、Right. So you you do go to the PS5 for those that those reasons. Yeah. And you are paying for those reasons. So why am I paying? So I think this is this? I think this is underrated with people. Who haven't bought a system yet, or, or are hesitant to jump on? Because I, like, I don't know what this is.、It's、like, yes, there's Game Pass. I don't know if that's enough to get people、mm-hmm. fully in. Yeah, I do think they were going to do something. They're going to announce some kind of something extra with Game Pass. I think they have to do. They、that. have to、yes. because I think this is going to be their proposition,、right. and I think they're shifting towards a focus on. Game Pass because that that does seem to be writing on the wall like that's what they are interested、yeah. in focusing on, 
Um, and I think they see from their player base that that's what, that's what the players are going to. Like, I literally exclusively play Me too. Game Pass. And I got a, you know, we, ha- we both have the series S, S yeah. um, which is less power, but Game Pass. Yeah. That's why. So, so, what, think, so what is your prediction in this category? I just think, yeah, I think there's going to be, like, a huge focus on Game Pass. They might announce new features for Game Pass. They might announce, you know, maybe new tiers or That's something. Vague. It's vague. Oh, I don't know. I think it could be, you know, you could announce individual games. You could announce a partnership with a third party. Like, they, you know, EA has a lot of its games coming on. Mm-hmm. Ubisoft has... I think this is what they'll do. I think this is the thing. It's like, we and today we're announcing this mega partnership with fill in the blank, where it's like all their games will be on Game Pass. Sure. Either day one or, or really... You know, really quickly mm-hmm. to make that appealing. You, yeah, you could also announce some sort of a new tier, a new tier of Game a premium Pass, tier. something structurally about how Game yeah. Pass works. Also, like something around like how you stream games too could be part of this. Like they had that Samsung TV partnership yeah. that they did that was kind of a big push for them. Like the, sort of almost similar to the the switch messaging of like playing your stuff anywhere or yeah. easily being able to toggle to Game Pass to play your stuff. Like, I feel like that sort of entertainment messaging will be part of that as well. That has been a little bit slow to ramp up for them, which is interesting because now it actually works really well. It does, so yeah. So I do think they should... I, I don't know how appealing, broadly appealing that is yet, but it, it does feel like something they should talk about. I think so, too. Yeah, I mean, I just don't know right now. It, it just seems like Game Pass has kind of hit... A, like ceiling a ceiling, yeah. In some yeah. ways, so they do need to keep working on that. And it almost feels like right, almost feels like right now. Whenever they talk about Game Pass, it's a little bit of an afterthought. So they're like, they talk about like the great new game that's coming, and they're like, oh, by the way, this will be on Game Pass. Yeah, like they should make that message like front and center. Because it's great when there's a, like a big new first party game, where it's like, oh, this feels like a steal that I'm just getting this quote yeah. for free. Right. But otherwise, it's just you know the trickle of of indie games, which is great. But yeah. I think it needs something more. Yeah, I, I agree. So back to f- the big first party games. So like you were saying, you know, they've had this strategy of just like dropping and announcing these games, but then like kind of not revisiting them for years. Yeah. So I don't like that strategy. I think they need to provide updates on the big first party games that yeah. we haven't heard about in a while. It's fable. And <laughs> pick one or two to give substantial updates on. Yeah. So I do think Fable is the one that gets mm-hmm. a blowout. Cause they, they kind of were teasing that. They teased it a little bit, yeah. Um, Perfect which, Dark which is, is another one on the list. The other one that I think they will do something on is this Indiana Jones Indiana game. Indiana Jones, Because yep. there's a movie coming out yeah. in a couple weeks. That's true. So I think those are the two that they will give a deeper update on. Mm-hmm. I'm so hyped for a Fable update. I need I need this. I love the Fable series. I'm literally the staking series. my entire grade on Fable. <laughs> if Fable's there, A. If Fable's not there, F. Yeah. Okay? And <laughs> That's the grading so, curve. Somebody said, like, oh, it's been 10 years since Fable 3 came out, which I couldn't believe, but it's I true. I couldn't believe that. Fable was so, the first game we bonded over. There's a lot riding on funny? that. I mean, there's a new studio. It's been a long time. Like, what do you do with this series now? Yeah. I don't know, but it, 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 that's really important. There is a magic to that game I hope that they retain, and I, I'm, I'm excited to see it, but, but I can't wait for this series to right. come back. But, like, other games that have been in this category are Perfect Dark, Perfect Dark yeah. Hellblade, Hellblade 2, 2, Everwild. Oh, Everwild, Avowed. Yes. Like, like yeah. some of those games I had to, like, double-check. I was like, are those still being made? Because it's been, it's been years. It's been so long. So, again, I don't think you need to, like, do a ma- major blowout, but you need something more than another CG trailer. To, yeah. Like, you need to say, like, yeah, like... Launch time frame. It's still, it, you know, we're working In on development. it. In development. It's coming along. Here's a new gameplay trailer. Right. You need to say, you need to acknowledge yeah. these yeah. and acknowledge what's happening with them in some sort of tangible yeah. way. Yeah. I couldn't believe when I was looking back at some of those announcements how, yeah. like, when they were made. It was like, this was announced in, like, 2021. Yes. I was like, what? 2021? Two years later, we haven't heard peep? Yeah. Yeah, that, that's crazy. Forza is the other one, too. Oh, yeah, that game's almost out. So, yeah, yeah they'll, so have, they'll, they'll have something on that. Yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah, I think people want to see, like, you've been buying all these studios? Or what are they doing with all yeah, these studios? Yeah, what are they doing? So, what is the out, output? Yeah, yeah, so I don't think you can let some of these go another year. Because mm-hmm. people just forget or stop caring. Yeah. Um, another kind of category is, like, again, if I was in their position, I would say, let's get some easy wins. You know, again, let's kind of just get people feeling good about Xbox again. Like, how can we do that? It's like, well, 
a game you could do that was like, hey, we still own Minecraft. A lot of people love Minecraft. Is there something fun we can do with Minecraft? I don't know what it is, but it's like, that's a fan favorite thing. Yeah, Minecraft Legends did um, pretty well, I think, for them, right? I don't think that game did well at it all, but well? <laughs> I, oh, that's no. not the feeling. I, unless that's one of those games that is like secretly, secretly doing, doing numbers. Well? I, thought it, I thought it Yeah. That was pretty decent. No? I mean, fine. So it, Anyway, it, it could be as simple as like a Minecraft interstitial that's like really cute. Like, oh yeah, they have Minecraft. I love that. <laughs> Again, get some easy wins to get people feeling good. Silk Song, they had Silk Song last year. Can you get another Silk Song update? That would get people hyped. Just try um, to drop that. Or then, like, is, like, what other third party exclusives <laughs> like could you get? Like, oh they did gosh. benefit from the PlayStation event because, like, all, so many of those games, they were so quick with that graphic. Like, hey, these are also coming to Xbox. Yeah. That worked in their favor. But it's like, are there any other, like, exclusives you could get out there? It's like, yes, Xbox has a thing. Nice. Yeah, and it's going to be on Game Pass for free. Right. So I put those in the category of just, just get some easy wins to get people feeling good. Doesn't have, does not have to be big at all. <sighs> You seem skeptical. I don't think they're gonna. <laughs> easy wins. They're Pick up some gonna. easy wins. It's gonna. like it's like in sports when it's like somebody is in a slump. It's like just do something easy to get your confidence back up, and then you'll be back in the game. That's how. It, that's like the, men do the mentality. Do you think of that they think that their confidence is low? Did you see Phil Spencer in that interview? He's like had in his hands. Like I can't believe what's happening. <laughs> okay. I think that yeah. You think that they? Recognize I, mean, I don't know if their confidence is low, but I think they're really like disappointed. In their in their performance in their in themselves yeah okay all right then maybe this is possible I think you need also one surprise one new thing we have not yeah. seen no man's sky I have I have a hopeful a hopeful thing that I'm putting here which is a new Wolfenstein game oh <laughs> which it's been several years since we've had a new one of those they that studio oh. is working on the Indiana Jones game but I think I've heard some people saying like yeah they're big enough that they can do two games at once. I love the Wolfenstein series. I love Wolfenstein. Series. I hope they do another so, Wolfenstein game. That would be... That and would I, be amazing. Again, I, I don't love the strategy of just randomly announcing games, but maybe that's one, one new thing. Because, again, we know about all these other things. The yeah. one new thing we're adding to the list. Yeah. And we can be careful about how we introduce that. Um... All my other things are about the Starfield. So what else do you yeah, have about I have, the... I have Starfield next as well. Okay. Yeah. So for that, so they just said like the showcase is going to roll right into this Starfield this Direct. Starfield Direct, yeah. So I think you need to answer a lot of questions. The big questions that people had about that. I game was going to say, yeah, you have to year. answer a lot of questions because we were left with after that like long trailer last year. I don't think we've gotten anything substantial no. that really addressed some of the not really the questions that we had after that. Yeah, I mean, I think you absolutely need to address like. Is this game just big a uh, No Man's Sky? Like, what what is the differentiator? Because I think that's what a lot of people say. Is like this looks like a high budget, higher budget, mm -hmm. No Man's Sky. Yeah. So, and I think it's also a chance to remind people why they love Bethesda games. Yeah. Because it's been a while since we've had one of those. Mm -hmm. um, you know, big detailed worlds. You can explore it in multiple ways. Has you know, a lot of heart to it. I think people were just like, this all looks procedurally generated. Yeah. It doesn't seem to have that personal touch that a Bethesda game often has. Yeah, exactly. Especially with like the story and the characters. Yeah. Like what give us more around what makes this story unique than just like I'm in space. Right. You know, because that's what we've seen so far. I, I haven't really gotten a good sense of anything beyond like this is a world set in space. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. And then I would say like you know, use this direct format the right way. Like, I don't need 19 s shots of somebody slowly walking through an office. Like, take <laughs> advantage of this, you know, opportunity to go yeah. deep on this game and really talk about the game. Yeah. I, I would like to see, like, real gameplay from real people that are working on this game yeah. that can point out things that are unique and different and tell me about why they're excited about it. Right. I, right. I would like that. So this game is probably, I mean, this game's coming out in September. Mm -hmm. I mean, this game is probably 99% done at this Hopefully. point. So yeah, really dig into it. Really, you know, show off what makes it unique and great and, and truly like the next big Bethesda adventure because yeah. I don't think people got that feeling last time. Yeah, and I think we, we talked about this before as well. Like this game already is very polarizing. It's going to be like a love it or hate it kind of thing. So they really need to work a little harder on, like, giving us more reasons to love it, you know? Yeah. Because I think right now people are really on, like, a razor's edge of either or. Yeah. So that could be kind of tough. Now, I forgot who, who said this. I saw somebody online suggesting this, which was, could you do 
a demo for this game or for any game, a cloud exclusive demo. Yeah. Because that way you don't have the worries of like data mining or mm -hmm. any of that stuff. Yeah, that'd be great. It's an interesting idea. Not probably not for this I don't, game. I don't know if that works well for this game. I don't know. I, I, I don't think they'll do that for any of anything in this event. But that is an interesting idea for the future to think about. Yeah. If that's going to be bigger, a bigger part of their, you know. Right. Unique because, composition, that could be a, yeah. a fun way to um, keep people excited about an announcement that you've made. Like, with yeah. some sort of Yeah, because people have said, well, now that E3's gone, like, why don't you just take the demos and give them to the people? And there's a lot of reasons that doesn't happen now. But doing it as a cloud demo yeah. could be a fun it could solution. could be a really good solution. Right. Yeah. So do you have anything else? I think that the last thing is, like, we've seen really poor pacing from PlayStation recently yeah. on their showcase. Like, I really want them to think about how to pace these announcements. Like, how to, like, structure them in a way where it doesn't feel like a two-hour slog. Yeah. Um, I think that it makes such a huge difference. Like, I don't know. I, it's overlooked a lot, I think, where we're not th thought about enough when it comes to some of these bigger showcases. But, like, if you can nail that and have, like, really good, just a really good flow through the showcase, I think it, it really, like, changes people's opinions of your stuff. I have wondered how, how long all this is going to be. Yeah, they're, they're I... notoriously long. Yeah, I'm feeling like if you can do the first part, the game showcase, in like 45 minutes and then maybe 20 minutes to 30 minutes on Starfield, like a really dense 20 yeah. to 30 minutes, like that that sounds good to me. I kind of feel like it's going to be longer than that, honestly, because they're just known to be long. I heard Summer Game Fest is going to be over two hours long. <laughs> so you better settle in for that story. You better get your bathroom break in beforehand. Oh, but that's what boy. you know, come to expect from a Jeff Keighley joint. Jeff Keighley, yeah. I feel like all of these are too long, like, honestly. Um, so, yeah, like, just figure out your pacing so that we, it makes sense. Yeah, know? yeah. Don't drop a random movie trailer in the middle of your showcase. That was weird. So we asked our Patreon subscribers uh, what they think Microsoft needs to do to get back on track or what would make them feel better about Xbox. We got some interesting responses. Daniel R. says, one thing I don't want is CG trailers or far distant games with nebulous release dates. Mm -hmm. They need a steady stream of smaller games like Pentiment. Oh, you love Pentiment. I love Pentiment. To shore up engagement between big releases. I'd also like some assurance that Starfield will have enough handcrafted content to justify a digital solar system's worth of empty space. I will not be excited by footage of harvesting three pieces of ore on Planet 78A. <laughs> that goes to the point of differentiating from No Man's Sky. Yeah, yeah. Josh Reig said, I don't think this would save Xbox, but it's so weird that Xbox owns so many rare IPs and does nothing with them. Especially after seeing that Banjo is still very popular after Smash, it's a little shocking that they haven't put a new Banjo game into the development in the four years since. I don't know if Rare themselves would be the ones to develop it, but I'm sure Microsoft could get another team at Xbox to work on it. Yeah? Yeah, a lot of Rare it's talk a, always. Rare is very enigmatic. It is. It is. They'll go... There's still a lot of love for Rare stuff, though. People, this is a nostalgia thing that they... Yeah, if they could get a big Rare announce. Obviously, Everwild is the, the game that they're working on now that they need yeah. to give an update. But if they have something else, and, and you know, could be something new, could be something I old. I think it's something like remastered is what people want. Sure. Like a reboot of something. I, people have a lot of love for these older Rare franchises, yeah. and I, I maybe get that the could, nostalgia angle. Maybe that could go into the easy wins Maybe there, there you go. See? Get some easy wins. You can get an Xbox Mini and get a Rare. A what? <laughs> An Xbox Mini with all your rare stuff. On. What are you talking? Oh, totally I, oh I see. <laughs> totally kidding. And totally kidding. finally, Mark Cruz said, "I need them to be consistent in making yeah. quality games, even if the cadence of games is slower than other companies. They do not have a killer app. You buy a PS5 for God of War. You buy a Nintendo for Zelda and Mario. You buy an Xbox because Game Pass." Exactly. exactly. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Make it clear. Maybe it is Game Pass. But yeah. if it is Game Pass, then give us, give it to us right in our face of why Game Pass is great and give us a lot of cool stuff for Game Pass. Right. You know? So before we wrap up the segment, I want, I want to ask, like, what is your confidence level, but 1 to 10, that they will do what they need to do? I'm probably at a 7. Yeah. I think that they're going to try. 
I think they're going to. Well, they better try. They're going to try harder than they have yeah. ever tried because they do know that they're on a bit of shaky ground. Yeah. But I think that there is so much learned habits and learned ways of doing things. Right. That it's going to be hard to break those. So they're still going to fall into some of these pitfalls, I think. But I think they're going to try really hard. So C I, for effort. C for. Effort. I'm going to say I'm at an eight. Really? I think Phil Spencer is getting real hands-on with this. Because <laughs> bringing some necks over there. <laughs> you see him, like whenever he's doing these interviews and he's, he's falling on the sword, it's like things, the takeaway I get from him is like, this wouldn't have happened if I was closely involved with this. Like mm. I, this, I recognize he's this is a problem. He's only one person though. I know, but if he, you know, that interview was like a month ago, he's like, yeah, I'm not letting this happen again. I'm not getting on this interview and falling on this sword again. I'm getting into this. I'm getting in yeah. with this team. I'm getting in with this project, and we are yeah. going to shape they, they it the just, right way. They are. They have a lot of like things happening around them. A lot of they need to focus. Focus. They have like thirty-seven oh, yeah. things that they're doing. Phil cannot focus. I on think 37 he has, things. He can make this a focus for a month. He can. He, he can make can, this a big focus. He can pick the three things to focus on. Those are the things that they're going to do well. I think. But what about the other? You know, thirty things. What are the other things? I don't know. I just. I feel like that's the, the their problem. One of their other issues is that they just have they have too many they have too much going on. You know, if I'm him, I don't want to sit down to my biweekly meeting with Sachi Nadella and tell him I screwed up again. I don't want to do that. <sighs> High pressure moment. Yeah. <laughs> Ouch. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I'm sure he's in it. I'm sure he's in it deep. But he is one man. He has limited time in his day. So it's, there's only so much you can do, honestly. Like, no matter what, there's only so much you can do. So he has to trust his team, and, you know, hopefully they're they're on the same page. Okay. Well, we, we shall will see. see. We yeah. will see. Yeah, join our stream and uh, watch it with us. Yeah. Uh, we have some great games that we are playing coming up next. But before then, this episode is sponsored by ExpressVPN. Oh, yeah. You know, watching Netflix without using ExpressVPN is like going to a great concert, but only being allowed to watch the opening act. And the reason for this mm. is because Netflix has this huge library of content that they have broken they down region lock it. by region. Yes. So there might be something incredible in some other country's version of Netflix that you cannot get to because oh. you are bound to the United States. Don't be bound. Get, this, get your Express VPN and you can unlock all of that great stuff. This is a technique you have used before. Tell us oh, about I it. I use this technique all Tell us the more. time. Backwards and forwards I've used this technique. <laughs> so I was in um, Europe during the latest Game of Thrones season. Oh. And I shan't be missing an episode right. because the, the spoiler uh, risk is very high. Yeah. So while I was in Europe, guess what? Logged on to that ExpressVPN, said that I was in the United States, logged on to my HBO, and lo and behold, there was Game of Thrones. That's great. I mean, you, you, awesome. it helps you get a lot more value yeah. out of these streaming services. I think maybe Absolutely. people now are wondering, like, do I need all of these? These these services seem mm -hmm. to be deleting more content than they're adding. Well, here's yeah. a way to open here's up. A way to open it up. All these new. You're going to go on a big vacation soon too, I'm, so you're gonna going to be wanting going, to keep caught up on stuff. I'm going to Asia. I might be missing out on some stuff that mm -hmm. I need to see that is not available there. I'll be yeah. using Express VPN. Yeah, I do it the other way too. I watch a lot of content from like, you know, Asian. Netflix, like Japanese Netflix, right? They have like a lot of shows that you know I don't get here in the U.S. Right. So you, it works both ways, people. It's great. Yeah, it keeps you're blazing fast speeds. You can do it with all your devices, phones, laptops, uh, smart TVs, mm -hmm. and yeah, they have these servers in 94 different countries. It's amazing. So wonderful stuff. Amazing. Be smart. Stop paying full price for streaming services and only getting access to a fraction of their content. Get your money's worth at expressvpn.com slash Kit and Krista. Don't forget to use the link at expressvpn.com slash Kit and Krista to get an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free. Wow. We'll put the link right over here and also in the description below. Yeah. All right. The okay. aforementioned games we are playing, okay. which is more than Zelda. More than Zelda. We've, we've, we've been able to do a little multitasking, which is nice. Yeah. But we'll start with Zelda. <clears throat> yeah. So let's so, do a little progress update. Where are we? So at this point, I think you and I are pretty matched in our progress. We have completed all four regional phenomena. Oh, you finished that one. I did, yes. Okay. Yeah, all four regional phenomena have been completed. Yes. I have yet to continue past that. 
Um, there was a thing. It, they tell you what to do next. I, I've not done it. Yeah, I, I also got that update, and I was like, well, I'll do that tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, and in between all of the sort of temples and stuff, I have been keeping up with my, like, exploration. So I, like, I'll do a temple, you know, and then I'll spend maybe a, a day and a half doing some exploration around, um, you know, whether it's doing a, a couple of smaller side quests or... I, I was so dumb. Like, I had yet to upgrade my Pura pad to get the shrine tracker. Oh, the shrine BP thing. And the um, travel medallion. So I, I, did I, I did all that. I did all that stuff in between. I talked to little Robbie. It's very cute. Um, so, you know, like little things like that. Or even like, you know, just uh, trying to fight some bosses to fuse some better weapons. Like, I fought my first Lionel. Which is very easy, actually. I was mm. surprised. I was like, oh, are... Hmm. Maybe the Gliox are the, hard, is next. the harder yeah. bosses than mm -hmm. because I think the Lionels were the hardest ones in Breath of the Wild. But yeah, so I've been doing um, you know sort of that kind of stuff in between, and um, and yeah, and and just checking off all of these all these dungeons. Yeah. So the ones that we we both did the Lightning Temple last. last. Yes. And I did. The Fire Temple and yours. What order did you do them in? I did Wind, Fire, Water, Lightning. Okay, and I did Wind, Water, Fire, Lightning. Yeah, we only had one difference, right. which is that you, so, you swap the fire and the water. Yeah, so an interesting topic to, or topic last week was about the dungeon. So interesting to revisit that, see if we feel any differently. Yeah. The fire dungeon, I did not like. I would put that as my least favorite oh, of the four. Unfortunately, the water dungeon is the one I did not like. We'll speak uh, vaguely about what these are so to avoid any spoilers, but the way you get around that dungeon... The fire dungeon? I didn't care for it. I see. And after talking to you, it sounded like... Oh, I skipped You all can that. really <laughs> cheese a lot of that. I cheesed it, yeah. By ascending around. Yeah, I use... I think ascend is my most favorite yeah. fuse ability now, or like ability now. Yeah, I just found that to be a little on the confusing side mm -hmm. and easy to like mess yourself up and have to do a lot of work to like get back to where you were before. So I was, was like, good. I, yeah. don't, I don't care for The this. ascending and um, I did I did build a, you know, some cheesy Zonite yeah. uh, machines up there okay. where I could use to I mean, skip the what they want me to do altogether. Right. Also um, that one I thought the process of getting to that dungeon was really like, kind of nothing Where, oh, whereas with, the, with the, the first two i did it was like really long the wind the wind temple i think the process of getting it was the longest also i thought the water mm -hmm. one was pretty long but, oh yeah i guess then, so then this one was just like yeah you're your hair i actually really liked um getting to the water one i thought that the the whole like you know process of yeah. doing that not to i, like I that. won't be spoiling it but that and when you finally figure out how to get there it was so cool. Like, I really loved that. But then I got to the temple and I was like, I don't really like this. Yeah, that's why it's hard to judge these. Like, when I think about how I would rank them, because you have mm. to consider both of those. You do. You there's... have to consider the progress leading up to the yeah. temple and the temple itself. Right. So it, it, it is hard, because there's some some that I like the progress more than the temple itself and vice versa. Right. Lightning, though, I think we both mm. liked a lot. That's my favorite one, I think. I think so, too. Yeah. Even though the process of getting there... It wasn't bad. I didn't, I didn't mind it. It was, I liked it, it was kind of a neutral thing for me. Yeah, I, I like, like every time, when we talk about the process of getting there too, I think it also counts with like the, the main character of that area that you're mm. reuniting with. Yeah. And I think we both are Riju fans. Um, she's really awesome, really cool power. And I think just like being in the Gerudo town again uh, was really fun. Yeah. And I really liked, I really just like that area a lot. Um like the look of it has, it's so unique, and yeah, the 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 interaction that you have with Riju leading up to the um, Lightning Temple was really fun and really different than some of the other ones that we've played. So I really enjoyed that part of it, and um, yeah, and then like the the actual like you know going through the desert and stuff like that. Um, There's some challenges there for sure. Like they made it pretty hard for yeah. you to get around, but um, but it wasn't like you know, super annoying or anything like that. So I didn't mind it. The Lightning Temple boss, I'm curious how, what you thought of that. I I've loved seen some it. people saying it was hard. You loved it? I loved My favorite boss so far was Lightning oh, Temple Oh, wow. Because it was hard. It, was it felt hard, yeah. good. Yeah. 
It had different phases. It felt like it was using the thing that I had picked up in the temple, like to its full maximum、mm-hmm. effect. I I was rolling deep, guys, with my whole party <laughs> around me. I was like, "You coming for me? Look at these people, okay? <laughs> I'm I'm gonna kick your butt.、Um, I'm gonna kick your butt so hard." And I was using like every single power to my. Oh really?、Advantage. It was. I, I felt、oh. so freaking good. Like I was using like everybody's. You know, like sage power that was working on the boss, and、okay. then like the the power that I got with Riju that I was like starting to like get the hang of going through this temple. I was using that. I was like, yeah, this is、hmm. like what it should feel like. Now, what if you did this dungeon first? Oof, that that would have been hard. Really rough. I give. I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how you. I'm bowing down to the people that did this one first because this is the hardest one, and I don't. I don't know how you would have done it with. Without the help of the other, I don't know. Gosh, that's that's really challenging. That's really challenging. Yeah. But um, I'm glad I saved this one for last. I really like the order that I played the the temples in, honestly, and I I, I stand by this order being the best.、Um, so I know I said it's hard to rank them, but I want you to do just that right now. Oh, absolutely, I can do it. Lightning one. And this、um, is this is also counting the pre dungeon、yes. stuff. Okay. Lightning one, wind two, fire three, water four. I think I would do lightning one. Water two, wind three, fire four. Oh, I did not like the water temple. I didn't. I mean, it was it was very simple, but again, I, I'm not looking f- to get. It's not that. It wasn't. It just wasn't f- that fun. I don't like the boss either. That the boss, boss was, was so. The boss was very strange. And that one I found to be very annoying、mm. and tedious. Like I, I think I fought that boss for a pretty long time. Like I was fighting.、Oh. That boss for a good, a solid like, at least ten minutes. Yeah. Ten plus minutes, and、okay. it was it was all like disgusting, and it was really <laughs> it I, it wasn't that I couldn't like I was trying to like you know figure out what to yeah, do. It was、yeah. more so that it was annoying and、right. I couldn't like pin it down, and、yeah. I was just like stupid. Um. So it wasn't like. You know, I was fighting the lightning boss for ten minutes, and I was ten minutes of like amazing fun. You know, I was fi-、huh. fighting the water boss for ten, ten, ten minutes, and I hated it. I was like, "Stop it!" Yeah, I think with that one, I, I very heavily weight the process of getting there, of getting to the dungeon for、uh, water, which I like quite a bit. I think it's very similar to the getting there process on the wind one, and I think that one's better. Well, better. I thought the wind one was a. Bit too much. It took, 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 took an hour to get there. I、so、really like doing more of the same thing. I love that.、Right. I thought it was so, and it felt good. It felt like you just, whenever you did the thing that you needed, to, this is so vague. You did the thing that you needed to do <laughs> in the wind, getting to the wind temple. You just, you had this like breath, like oh yeah, this oh it feels so good. You know what I mean? Yeah. So now my big question for you is, are you now going to? So、I've seen some conflicting things about what happens next. I've seen some、oh. people say like, "Yeah, like you're kind of in the home stretch and you can、oh. wrap this up." But I've also seen some people say like, "No, there's a few more things that happen." So I don't actually know. Are you going to continue on with this, or are you going to be fooling around?、Um, I will take a little break before advancing the main story. I think I I still want to finish up a couple of side quests.、Yeah. So I have the Clover Gazette. I'm really close. I'm like two more quests for that, so I'll be done.、Um, I want to fill out my underground map. All the way, yeah. Oh it's wow, pretty easy. I mean, it's not that hard、okay. at this point. I'm just like, per like fifty percent done at this point. Oh so. wow. Um, so I want to do that. Now that I have more shrines from the Gerudo area as well, yeah, I yeah. can like match it, do my shrine、okay. matching, um, to figure out that area, and I think that would be a fun in between thing to do, and just kind of like get that map. I gotta complete all the map, all three levels. Okay. You know. Okay. Um. And yeah, I I did do the Laurelin Village、mm. pirate quest, which how was w- that? W- as an in between, it was so fun.、Um, was it hard? Yeah, it was、mm. fun. Hard though, it、okay. was like you had to like do a little stealth, you know, yeah, yeah, and like get rid of the pirate, and then you you build it into like a resort town, which is really cool.、Oh. And everything you do there, you get all your stuff free. You get free food.、Oh. You get to sleep there for free. You get free stuff,、wow. free money. Okay, they love you there.、Mm. And Bolin is there, whatever his name is, looking fab. <laughs> I love that guy. He's the guy. He's the best. And the, it, the rebuilding the town was really fun. Yeah. Like there was like fun little puzzle things that、okay. they, they let you do. So,、um, there's like a second phase to that. Maybe I'll maybe I'll do that too because it it is it was a fun quest.、Um, 
Um, and then, I, then yeah, I think I'm ready to s complete the game. I think I'm going to just keep moving along because I am intrigued by this cliffhanger that they left off with. What's a cliffhanger again? Well, maybe I played like five minutes more than you did after finishing that dungeon because I they did sort of explain like what you do now and what and like why you're doing that now. So oh, okay. I, I didn't, maybe I didn't do that part. I am intrigued by that and do. Okay. I am curious what's happening with that thing. So okay. I don't know if I'll just like keep rolling, but yeah. I, but I do just want to see like what what's what's going to happen now. Okay. I want to know. Cool. Yeah. I'm excited that there's like, something like that. I'm kind of tired of hearing about the imprisonment of war. I'm like, could you not have like talked to me all at once? <laughs> like me, I do all four, and then like all four of yeah. you come and we have like a, a Zoom meeting, yeah. all four of us, and we just chat about the imprisoning war um, for one hour. Like you could have, right, you could have done right, that. Right, I don't right. know if I needed to hear it four times, but cool, 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 cool. <laughs> uh, anything else on Zelda? No, I, yeah. I think we're we're moving along. And I, I feel good about the pace that we're going. Like, we're not rushing through it. I don't feel like I'm getting spoiled or anything like that by anybody. Like, I'm, I'm still, like, on... You're the one doing the spoiling. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> you are. I'm not. I'm yeah, not I, thought, I thought that I would hit, like, some sort of a limit. It's like, right, I need to get more hearts or I need to get more something else. But I've been doing fine. Oh yeah, me too. So yeah, that's 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 kind of why I've I felt okay to just keep moving along. Yeah, I'm like 80 shrines in now, so okay. I'm I'm like I'm pretty I'm pretty beefy now. You're and into I, your second row of hearts and stuff. I'm in my second row of hearts. Yeah. I've all, I'm not there I, and I'm almost full on in my stamina. Okay. And I have um, yeah, I have like you know like good armor, like fully upgraded armor mm -hmm. from all the fairies. Mm -hmm. I you know found some cool pieces. So like I, Link is definitely, and the weapons that you have now are so much better. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, I, he doesn't feel as squishy yeah. any, anymore for sure. He definitely feels more powerful. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's move on to Street Fighter VI, which is the other game yeah. we've been squeezing in. So good. And this, so we we got this game pre-launch, but there was a lot that we couldn't do with it until the ser the servers. Turned on. Turned on, yeah. So it's been a whole new round of discovery for us. With yeah. This game. Yeah, we've been, um, we set up our like battle hub stuff and we've been um, playing a little with, with each other, which mm -hmm. has been really fun. It's kind of an interesting thing that you have to do in the battle hub. It's a little bit. It's a bit confusing. It's a little bit complex and we had to sort of figure it out. Right, but once we, you do. We just wanted to do a normal friend match. Mm -hmm. So we was like, well, surely you go into the battle hub for that. But you don't. Well, first of all, I have to add you as a friend in the game. My our PlayStation friend didn't really didn't transfer over. You make also much have of, to make a, a difference. Capcom, a, yeah, like, Capcom account. thing. So do that if you want to play online. So then, and then you go into the uh, like the fighting grounds. Yeah. Where there's this whole other types of online matches that you yeah. can do there, and it was there. Yeah. So, but then we also saw things like custom rooms, which was available, but then you would. Click, click on it, it and it's like well you can't do this you right can't now. do this right so now. so i guess we can't do more that to right. learn about yeah how to do everything online in this game yeah but battle uh the battle hub though is really interesting you like pick you go both go into like the same server basically mm -hmm. um it's kind of like an mmo in that way and then you find each other and you kind of like sit down at these arcade machines together which is a cute little touch yeah and then from there you can play matches mm -hmm. um and i guess like if we wanted to play with any of you guys like hop into the same server that right. we are and we could like play together which right. is kind of fun that would be really cool actually. did you um poke around the battle hub and see all the other stuff yeah you can like use your there? points like your kudo points or right. whatever to buy accessories and stuff and there's like other little like things that you can access like character stuff and I yeah. did poke around. It, it's kind of neat. I like how they had little like selfie stations just for your character. Yeah, I thought that was cute. Exactly. In one of those corners, they have just like other like other Capcom games you can play. Did you see that? No. Like so, they just had like Final Fight. Like sit down and play all of Final Fight here, <gasps> or like play like oh, that's so the fun. old Street Fighter Two. So it's literally like an arcade. I think they said they're gonna rotate the those games. games. But that was really, I was like, wow. What a surprise. That's, neat. that's really neat. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I love that. That's so a that great feels idea. like a very fun and vibrant place. Yeah. Um, just wish kind of the navigating all of it was a bit yeah. easier. Once 
we figured it out, it was okay. But right. the figuring it out part, I was like, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing Seriously. Here. Right, right, right. Yeah. Um, but how have you, you've been doing some online bells. How's that been going? Uh, well, <laughs> not very good. I've no. been focusing on two characters. Yeah. Uh, Manon, yeah. um, which is the new the new character we were talking about last week, the French ballerina. Um, very fun, uh, and her like the way that her, she moves is just like hilarious because she's always doing like ballet twirls and stuff. Mm-hmm. And then the other one that I really like right now is Blanca. Yeah. Um, but I, I I am learning more. I I keep like going back to some of those little character tutorials. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I I did win like. One or two okay. matches. Okay, that's good. Yeah. It wasn't like a complete blowout. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I like I know how to do the moves at least, which is good. Like I'm still using the modern controls, but like I know the basics. You know, like even like stuff that I wasn't able to do before, like some of the combos or something. Some some of the easier combos and stuff. Like I feel like I can do this. Like it's not, it's not so. That bad. If you're using modern controls online, do you get matched up with people doing that also? Yeah, you do. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So ours wouldn't be very fair, I don't think. That's what we're going to do. I know, when but we, when you, we, play we more already online. know yeah. that. <laughs> you have to give me a little handicap. Um, I've been still continuing to focus on, on eHonda, so I haven't spent too much time on these other characters. Yeah. This whole, like, drive gauge... I just I just keep learning more yeah. about it, and it's just like such a big part of the game. That honestly, when we went to Capcom, like they didn't spend a lot of time talking to us about that. Yeah, which, maybe which they was wanted interesting. To, us to discover it on our own, but I I didn't learn about it until I did like some of the right, tutorials right. for so the characters. That's kind of what I've been focused on learning is like all the ways you use that and when to use that. Yeah. So I have gone up with in online with some people who like really have that. Down, yeah. which has been a challenge, but my oh. my win loss rate is I'm still over fifty percent. So oh. I still and I still have a lot to learn about that, but it's been going fine. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. It's been it's been great to see people really loving this game, and mm-hmm. I mean, this and Zelda and Diablo is just so much. There's so great much stuff in stuff out yeah, right now. Totally. It's it's uh, honestly we've it's a little much. Diablo. We'll see you later. I know we already decided <laughs> yeah. last week that we'll we were going to shelf Diablo. this one. We mean that. Yeah. Uh, you've also been dabbling with another game called Sunshine Shuffle. Yes. What is this? It is such an interesting concept. So it is a game. The gameplay is Texas Hold'em poker. Are you a poker person? I'm a poker person. I love really? poker. Oh, oh yeah. Mm-hmm. I didn't know I played, that. I uh, played ve- po- poker in Vegas for I the first time. I know you're a Mahjong time. person. I'm a, I'm, I'm a gambling person. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a degenerate. <laughs> no, not all gamblers are degenerates. That's a misconception. Um, yeah, I, I love playing poker. I host like poker nights um, with my friends, and we love playing poker. But I actually, like, I was, I've been really nervous always to like play poker in Las Vegas, but it's like a goal of mine and I finally did it. Oh, why? Oh, you did it, good. Oh, because it's terrifying. Yeah, okay. We're gonna lose like a lot of money and people are gonna be like scary. But I did it um, a couple months ago and uh, it was like, my heart was- How did you do? I did fine. All right. But I probably had like the worst poker face. I was so nervous. <laughs> and there was like some people that just, I can't believe the way they You need they're. the hoodie and the sunglasses. I need all the, the things. Everything. Yeah, the bedding. Oh my yeah. gosh. It's But it's it's such a such a thrill, you know? Anyways, so when I heard about this game and how it is based on poker as like the gameplay mechanic, I was like, I need to play this game. So the, the premise is really interesting. So you are, you're like these little animals. They're like cute on a river boat and you join this posse of animals as like an investigator. <laughs> the way you're describing this is hilarious. It's really weird. Posse of animals posse on, of on a river, river boat casino, great. It's not even a casino, it's just like somebody's oh, river boat. Right. And you, you sit down to play poker with them. And as you're playing, you have like poker chat. Like the, the whole fun part about playing poker is that you like hang out with your friends and you talk. And, um, and like the story starts to come out. Like they've like, it's like a crazy story. It's like Ocean's Eleven. Like they they like heisted. Oh. They're like a heist group, and this this one of their friends like got shot and killed. But these animals are like really cutesy. They're cute, looking. but they're, they're they're the stuff that they're talking about is not cute. 
It's like that movie. What was that movie that was really where Mark, Marky Mark had the teddy bear? Yeah, um, Ted. Yeah, I think that's what it's called. <laughs> Is it like yeah, that? it's kind of like that. The animals they look like cottage critters. Like they're super cute, like little bunnies and stuff. I'm a little mouse, you know. But the and then like the captain's like this like cute dog, um, the leader of this like heist team. But they're like swearing. They're oh. like. It's like bleeped out, like in like symbols, right. but you know what they're saying. They're talking about like their friend that's like died basically in this bank rob heist that went what? wrong. <laughs> and then you like play poker and they're telling you their stories and their stories are like so sad. And like, it's like I joined this team because like so and so needed money for, I don't know. So the, I think, I think that's what it is. I think the game is just you playing poker. Okay. But there's them. a story that comes and out. And as they that's like. Nice. As you play, they tell this. They tell you like their story and like what is happening. You're like an investigator, okay. so they don't quite trust you yet. So you're playing poker to like gain their trust. Yeah. Um, so it's it's really it's really interesting and really fun. I I played basically one whole round and got like the first round of stories. Like you play until you either lose all of your money or win all, all of their money. Right. Um, just putting out there that I, I won that hand. So I won that round. So. This game was in the news because I think there was some sort of a snafu with the ESRB. This where must were, be rated like... Where they were saying like, oh, this game might be like promoting gambling to kids. So, well, because so the animals I think they misinterpreted cute. the subject matter based on what you're saying. Yeah, the subject matter is not for kids. Yeah, so I think for some of the platforms it came out a little bit later than others, but that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, you're, but the animals are really cute. But like they're talking about not so cute adult things, adult themes, adult themes. Uh, I see. It's good. It's if you like if you like poker, <laughs> you would love this game because it just replicates that experience, but in like the best, like in a in a really fun way. I love to sit down at a poker table in Vegas and be a part. Part, um, you know, part of a conversation about a heist that they they yeah. pulled. That'd be awesome. So one of my very early work experiences at that agency I started at was in the midst of the poker craze. Oh yeah, I remember that. Working on a game called Stacked with Daniel Negreanu. Daniel Negreanu is like one of the big poker pros. Oh, I don't know what that and is. And that was quite the experience for me. I don't I don't play or like poker at all. Really? So I don't really gamble. Period. So do you have you ever tried to play poker like for reals? Like with friends or yeah like, yeah yeah I've done it I just no don't, don't you don't like care cards for it. huh I love cards but yeah that that was a, a wild experience maybe that'll be a future story time man uh, okay that game is not what I thought it was it's good <laughs> good thing we talked about it it's really good <laughs> yeah uh, the last thing here and I I've really only played this game extremely briefly but I just wanted to shout it out because I had no clue that this was out is yeah. the we love Katamari re-release oh which is one of my favorite games ever yes. This game came out of nowhere. Talk about the worst time to release this game. My gosh, what were they thinking, Bandai Namco? But yeah. this game is a pretty, you know, faithful re-delivery of what this game was. They did have the original Katamari Damacy that came out. I'm playing it on Switch. It's on a lot of different platforms. Yeah. It's not like there's a base game and then there's like a deluxe edition that comes with some other stuff. I'm not exactly sure what is in there. I just got the base game, but it's great to play this again. You know, it looks great, plays great. It's such a good evolution of the first game which was pretty mm -hmm. i mean that, that, people forget that it was like a 20 dollar little game that they just released on a whim yeah um and became and, this and it became this series this big yeah. hit yeah um and this is definitely the best version of the series after this um keita takahashi became less and less involved in this series and it kind of got watered down so i actually don't think yeah i think he was the magic i don't think the games it. after these first two are, are super worth playing even so yeah. but but this one is just so good and and again like so many great variations and elaborations on the core idea yeah so i don't, I don't have a lot of impressions to share other than you know i remember this game being great still great so i just want to make sure people know you know we love the prince he's right there on the, the prince is right there the prince is always there exactly. watching you exactly <laughs> so yeah it's nice that we're squeezing in some, some variety here. That's right. Yeah. That's right. All right. Let's move on to the news. I think we've only got two stories this week, but that's fine. Okay. Plenty of news coming this week. Oh my gosh. First is this strange, funny business that's happening with Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I saw that. So we had this whole conversation of, is this going to be in the Sony event? It was not. Mm -hmm. But now they have taken to Twitter oh, on the boy. Final Fantasy VII account to do these, like, 
developer comment posts. I like how it's just called developer comment number one. Yeah, well, this is how you know this person running this account's in Japan. And they've done now, as of the time of us recording this, three of these, mm -hmm. like kind of like every day or every other day. Yeah, it's very Where they'll strange. do like a QA. and a The first question was, how is development progressing? And the answer to that was, it's going fine. They're still working on nailing down a release date. The second one was, how will players journey through the world outside of Midgar? And they said, you'll have a high degree of freedom, experiencing a myriad of different stories. And then the third one was, what should people look forward to in the game? And they talked about, they will see a chain of narrative developments while discovering each character's destiny. So I think a lot of people are wondering, why are they doing this now? Mm-hmm. So tell I guess us. Maybe, tell us why. Maybe just to keep people from forgetting about this game altogether on the cusp of Final Fantasy 16 coming out. It's like, oh, and don't forget, this also exists. It's a very strange way of doing that, but I could see that as a reason why. I've seen some people suggesting that this game will be in the Summer Game Fest stream, which is, we have talked about, like, you know, that... If you have two place kind of semi competing PlayStation sure. games, this is a way to, to get around that because it's like you've got like two weeks in between. Mm -hmm. If I'm the the head guy on Final Fantasy 16, though, old Yoshi P, I'm telling them to <laughs> uh, knock it off, knock it off until this game comes out. Stop. Yeah. Because they said this game's it's coming out weird. winter. If gosh, I would be so mad if it's like I I have I have a full fledged Final Fantasy. And I can't even experience a full, proper holiday season without you stepping on my toes. And also, like, just give me, like, some breathing rooms in the, in the three week leading up to launch, you yeah. know? The, the, the funny thing, too, is funny slash probably annoying thing, too, um, for the Final Fantasy 16 dev and, and team is, like, the first question is about the release date and how they don't have one. So it's like, right. well, don't do that. I think in a perfect world, this, this feels like a game that should come out at the end of March, kind of the end of that fiscal, which is, mm -hmm. I guess that's not technically winter anymore, but I, I do wonder. So there was also this, this thing that was getting around um, here from Imran Khan, formerly of, oh, yeah. of Game Informer, yes, where he yes, had been sure. hearing like, oh, Square might be a little bit worried about the pre-orders for Final Fantasy 16. Mm -hmm. I wonder if they are waiting to announce a release date because if like, hey, if Final Fantasy 16 is a real dud, we might just get this game out in the holidays so we can cash in big on this thing that is more of a sure thing. Mm, maybe. 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 But I think they're playing with fire with the strategy they of really trying are. to juggle these two games when they really don't need to do this right now. Yeah, just see seven. how it goes at least first for 16. Give it, give it its room to breathe and, and come out and for people to you know, to buy or not buy it, right? Yeah. And then do it. Like, why do you need to do it now? It's so weird. Unless I'm, it is to, like, sort of have some sort of, like, connected universe between the Final Fantasies. But that's also a weird Yeah, try. I mean, I know pe I know some people still have questions about 16, but, I mean, all these games that are coming out, I, I, I assume that the reviews for this will be good based on what we've seen. But, like, mm -hmm. all these games that are coming out now are, like, critically acclaimed but also selling really well. Like, Zelda, yeah. selling great. Street Fighter seems to be selling great. Selling Diablo great, seems yeah. like it's going to sell great. Yeah. It seems like this could just be the next one of those. Like it's, I think it's going to be fine. People are like going hog wild on these games this yeah, early wanna, summer. Yeah, people want to want to play so, these games. Like, there's no indication of people that of people not wanting to play this right, game. So it's like, so, yeah, maybe your pre-orders right now are a little slow, but I wouldn't take that as a like full-on confirmation that it's yet. not going to yeah. work out. So yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I have no capacity to listen to any Final Fantasy VII updates right now. Are you excited for the next remake? I can't even think about it because I don't want to think about it right now. Yes, because I love the first part one of that a lot. I am less of a Final Fantasy VII fan than you. I am a huge Final Fantasy and VII And I fan. thought where, I really loved the first one, but I thought where they ended the story off felt a little weird to me. That's why I'm... So I, so I don't know. I want to know. I, I don't know how I feel about What's this happening game. here? Yeah. I, I also have, I, I don't want to hear about this game right yeah, now. Yeah, I want to hear about Final Fantasy sixteen. Yeah. Because <laughs> that is the next game I'm playing. Yeah. I'll be done with Zelda by then, and I will be diving deep into Final Fantasy 16. I can't wait. It's going to be great. Mm -hmm. So let me enjoy that moment, you know? Yeah, yeah. We shall see. Yes.
Next story is about uh, the MetaQuest 3. Oh, yes. Has been announced. Mm -hmm. So this is obviously the uh, Facebook Oculus headset. Yes. Kind of run through some of the details. It'll be out later this year. Mm -hmm. Starts at $500. The Quest 2 the base price was cheaper, three hundred dollars, but they yep. also have the Quest Pro, yes, which is a thousand starts a thousand dollars. Wow, it's expensive, yeah. And I watched the video for this. The one thing that stood out to me as different is that it, you know they call it full color pass through for AR. So basically, you can see there must be like cameras on the outside. You can see no, well, you stuff. You can see in the, the cameras on the outside. Is that what those are? I, don't I think know. so. Yeah, there's like iPhone cameras almost. Yeah, I mean, it looks. Like you can see basically what's happening around you, and yeah. you can do AR stuff that way. I thought that was uh, that's are, good. Are there other headsets that do that? I don't. I know. don't think so. As, as, I, I don't. I, at least I don't know of. With my only VR experience being limited to Labo, Labo VR, VR, I've really yeah. not well equipped. Yeah, I don't think the Sony headset does this, right? Okay. I don't okay. think so. That seemed neat. Um, yeah, this is the whole like mixed reality thing that's been the chat that sort of the conversation around. VR for a while. I think we saw that at, at GDC maybe like a year ago even. Like oh, this yeah. idea of yeah, yeah. mixed reality and, and you being able to be in VR yeah. but also kind of have a sense of your the world around you still. Mm -hmm. That That is very appealing to me because I actually really, really dislike being locked into VR. And I... Oh, yeah find myself not being able to stay in it for very long and I get really like disoriented and, and I feel unwell. Yeah, I mean, um, this seems like very capable, well-made hardware, but I, I agree with you that unless they get past this form factor, it's never gonna take off the way they want it to. Yeah, the form factor and like, I think the barrier to enter for VR is just going to be higher than a console. Um, and I think that has always been like a limiting factor, at least for me personally, in getting into like VR stuff is that like it just feels, it feels too much like of a hurdle to go through to, yeah. to enjoy what, what VR has to offer. Um, the other thing is I, I continue to wonder like what is, what game or what, what, yeah, what, is, the what is their quote or... killer app or whatever you want to call it. I hate that phrase, but like what is the content for it? I saw... Um, that they had the same game that was in the PlayStation Showcase. Which, which one? The zombie one. Not Resident Evil? No. The, the like, jokey the zombie jokey one? The jokey zombie oh, okay. one. I was like, boring. Are they getting Resident Evil? I don't know. I didn't see it. the PlayStation exclusive Maybe it's thing. an exclusive. I don't know. Huh. Um, I, don't, I, didn't, I didn't see it with this announcement. Right. Unless I missed it. I don't know. Um, but it's like they, they really struggle with... They also seem to be getting like IP for this thing. Confused about like who is the market because I sometimes see them yeah. doing stuff that's like, oh, don't just play those gross games. Do like Beat Saber or something like that. It's like, yeah, I like Beat Saber. That's a fun right, game. but it's yeah. like which is the easier category to actually get next based on what you have now. I know. Is it people who want to play games or is it like casuals? I think it's people who want to play games. I agree. So I think I it's think, weird when they're... Again, when you're talking about the barrier to enter for casuals, is even higher than right. for like a game. A so then don't talk games. down on the people that like should be your next yeah. move. They have a very confused message too. It's like they don't have a, a very clear proposition for right. what, why you would want to get you know, a $500 VR thing, you know? Right. I mean, I get just speaking of myself, of somebody who's like very skeptical of VR, like I... I'm probably never going to get one of these until the form factor radically mm -hmm. changes. Yeah. You can't, though, because the only way you can see the world is when you block out everything else. You just, how are you going to do it? You know, you just, mm -hmm. it, it, it's like a, I don't know, it, it's, it would be so difficult for them to do it. I don't, I, I wouldn't get this unless there was like a experience that I only can get on VR yeah. that I couldn't get anywhere else. If someone's like, the next Zelda game is only on yeah, v yeah. is only in MetaQuest 3. I'm like, okay, right. I guess I'm getting well, a, I mean, that's what Meta people thought know. the Half-Life game was going to be. No, but Alex, it, re it really yeah, wasn't. Alex, so Alex, I think that that's like, well... I tried. Is there an experience? I tried to play that game and I got so sick. Oh no, you yacked? I was like, I can't do this. <sighs> 10 minutes, I was like, I can't do this. But if, like, if that does not get people to move on, like what will? Half-Life! I know! Half-Life can't lose. That's like the holy grail. So I, know. I don't know. I'm just, I mean, th again, it's like, this looks, this looks like a great piece of hardware. It's I, I don't want, I don't want it at all though. I don't, I don't. I want to hear, I want to hear people that love VR. Tell me 
Tell me why. Tell me why you there love it. There are people out there, like 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 our friend Mark McDonald. I, I used to work for 8.4. Like, he yeah. is a true like disciple of, of VR. But. Yeah, but I want to hear like other people. Like There must be so many of you out there that love VR, that maybe own a Quest or own the PlayStation VR or something else. Like Tell me what you why, why you love it and what you play and what you do in your headset. Because yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm very curious. Um, yeah, the Quest Pro sales, I think, last year were terrible. Because they're it's so expensive. Oh my gosh! Like, oh the thousand dollar one. Yeah, and my, I mean, what makes that worth a thousand dollars? I don't. Again, know. I don't know anything about it. So. <laughs> I have no idea. It must be just very powerful. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we'll see. We shall see. That's the news. Let's get into some questions from our community. We get every single question from our Patreon community. First day's from Bruce Dash. Hey, Kit and Krista, question for you both. While working at Nintendo, how did Nintendo feel about the particular subgenre of games being referred to as Metroidvania? Does Nintendo acknowledge the term? Do they dislike the term or find it strange for the name of these two series, Metroid and Castlevania, to be blended together to form this word? Were you allowed to say that word while working at <laughs> Nintendo? Same questions again, but specifically for Kit, but for when he was working at Konami. How did Konami feel about the word Metroidvania? How did Konami feel about the word Metroidvania? Well, in this case, you've got the two companies who make up the two halves of the word. So I think in both cases, it was like, well, we're not going to use the word, but we'll just say it's like a Castlevania-type experience or a Metroid-type experience. Mm -hmm. You don't have to say the other half of it. Right. I did look on the, the Metroid website because I, like, I can't remember what we used for the genre, mm -hmm. for Met like Metroid Dread. What did we call yeah. the genre of that? Yeah. What is it, it just said action adventure. Action adventure, yeah. Right. It's a very generic So genre. they weren't, like, Nintendo was not mad about it. I mean, it certainly was not something we could say or acknowledge. Well, we could say it internally as a way to describe things. Sure. But, but we weren't, like, using it in official outgoing marketing exact, materials. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, because, again, it's like, yeah, it's a Metroid-type experience. You know what that means. Yeah. It's very similar to the Castlevania adventures on, on Konami. But I, I remember, we, I recall lots of times when we were doing, like, product demos with you know, internal mm -hmm. product demos with Treehouse, they would use the word Metroidvania. Okay. So internally, I think it, it is, it's like a, it's like a term that, like you, like you're saying, basically, like people understand what that is. So it's yeah. just like an easy way to describe something, mm -hmm. but outgoing, like an outgoing message of what genre a game is, we, we would never call it Metroidvania. Can you keep calling it Metroidvania when there are no new Castlevania games? Well, that's, my question. that's still a, a, a style, right? That exists. Just putting it out there. What is it going to be called? <laughs> Just then? saying. What other what other combination of words could we do for these? Oh. Yeah. Uh, Cerulean Dragon is next. Hey, Kit and Krista. I've really been enjoying Tears of the Kingdom, and one of the biggest surprises to me was how massive the depths are. I've had a great time exploring that area. However, it's definitely clear that this area would look even more excellent on a Switch OLED due to how dark it is. Sometimes it's a bit hard to see with glare and stuff on my regular Switch's screen when playing in handheld. Do you think the Switch OLED influenced the decision to make the depth so expansive? Or vice versa, do you think the existence of the depths during development is one reason the Switch OLED was developed? I'm genuinely curious about this and would love to hear your thoughts. Thanks. I don't think the two are related. Um, no. At all. I think that the OLED was developed just as like a natural new next step next for the hardware switch hardware half step um and to sell more st more systems right um and i think that the depths were developed very separately as a way to expand the the game world of tears of the kingdom so i don't think the two are related yeah i doubt that team even had much insight into, into what hardware. was happening with that until yeah. it was like almost done yeah and i'm sure they knew about like the power parts of it in yeah. terms of like how to develop a game for that specific power limitation but right not the oled screen yeah and i'm sure you know their assumption is like well this is a game that a lot of people are going to buy and a lot of those people just have the base might be like a day one system so we better make sure that it looks fine on, on that both. sure it yeah. looks better i mean pretty much everything looks better on the OLED. Yeah. I always find that funny when people say, hey, this looks great on the OLED. No <laughs> it's duh. like, well, well yeah, <laughs> okay. Yeah, for me, I, I play almost exclusively in handheld mode, so I do have the OLED, and I, I love Tears of the Kingdom on the OLED. It looks beautiful. And right. Yeah, yeah, no no, uh, no issues with the 
the darkness of the depths on the OLED, that's for sure. That said, yeah. when, when we did our Hyrule in real life video, we're like, well, let's bring, let's bring our systems. Can't see and we'll, a we'll, darn we'll, thing. We'll do some scenes where we play outside for a bit. And it was so sunny, like you couldn't you see, anything. see anything. So yeah. we 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 absolutely faked those scenes. Yeah, yeah. But um, we did. yeah, it's definitely not like a phone yet. Yeah, where it's super, super, super bright. I wonder if there's a way to do that for the next system. Yeah. That would be great to have it work in bright light like that. Yeah. Riven asks, do you generally prefer stamina vessels or heart containers? Of course, we're referring to Tears of the Kingdom. I think it's also or Breath, Breath, of, of, the Breath of the Wild here. So what do you like? I'm pretty even. I usually do like try to keep it, you know, as even as possible. I do like, um, there's, you know, there's more hearts that you can get than there is stamina. So you can finish your stamina wheel yeah. faster. So I think if you're like, I just want to complete the stamina wheel, then I'm, I don't have to worry about it anymore. After you get like sort of a minimum amount of hearts, that's an okay strategy as well. But I've been pretty even in mine. In Breath of the Wild, I definitely favored stamina because I loved climbing and I wanted to do the most of that. And also that game was not as hard as Tears of the Kingdom, so mm. I didn't need as many hearts. Yeah. Like I still haven't maxed out all my hearts in that game. And I probably never will because it, I don't need in it. In Breath of the Wild? Yes, in Breath oh, of the Wild. I don't, so I don't, I don't need it. I don't mess. Do in Tears of the Kingdom, I thought I would favor hearts more because early on it was hard. But I, like you, have found it, it's very even. Yeah. In my distribution now, mm -hmm. because the hardness has evened out and I have other things to help you with help me get hard. around versus yeah. just climbing. So yeah. that's been interesting to see the difference. Yeah, I have one more pip of st or one more thing of uh -huh. stamina left to complete my wheel. Yeah, and I think that is the last. You don't get any more. Yeah, stamina. but either way, like I feel I feel fine with how much I have now. Like I don't feel like I need. Yeah, really I don't, more. I'm not getting one shot killed at all anymore. I feel pretty good. Yeah, and I don't climb it nearly. At the amount that I did in Breath of the Wild. Do you find that the, this happens a lot to you where you get hit by something that's really powerful but you still have a quarter of a heart left? I think the game does something. Oh, where it's maybe like, it's like they don't want you to get one shot. Because, kill, yeah, because it's like it, maybe this is how they balance out like some of those bosses being a lot harder than others where yeah. it's like we'll take you to the brink of dying <laughs> but not actually dying so you can eat something. Yeah. yeah. Maybe? I don't know. Maybe, yeah. I, that I, seems to happen I rarely to me a lot. get one shot killed now, I would say. It feels like more than a coincidence. Yeah. How much I it's mainly get killed point. from fall damage. <laughs> Still? <laughs> I thought you were going to max out this wingsuit. I haven't found the other pieces. Oh. Um, I definitely get I get more deaths from fall damage. Or the only other thing is when I get lightning yeah. and I drop all my weapons and I'm like scrambling around trying to pick it up mm. and then I I die. Okay. Someone kills me. Zelgaroth asks, Aonuma was saying that the open world format of Zelda games are supposed to stay the same from Breath of the Wild on, which I accept. However, I think it would be a real shame if the art style never changes again. How do you feel about that? I like the wide var variability between Link's look in Wind Waker to that in Twilight Princess, and I hope the Zelda teams allow themselves to stray from Link's Breath of the Wild look more than just giving him a different haircut. Oh, I totally cannot agree more with Zelgaroth on this one. I think some of the, you know, the fun parts when we were doing all of our like Link ranking videos and stuff is you get to see how much the character has either evolved or how, how there's different books and styles for um, the characters and even the world itself. And one, one little complaint I do have about Tears of the Kingdom Breath of the Wild Link is that he really is kind of like too stoic Oh, and yes. a little bit expressionless. And I, I, I oftentimes find myself missing like Wind Waker Link's expressions yeah. or Skyward Sword Link's expressions and reactions. Or even, um, you know, the sort of that very like medieval knightly look of Twilight Princess. So I, I hope that they do, you know, leave themselves open to creativity, maybe with with some of these other... 2D Zeldas that they hopefully will still keep making that will have a different art style. Or I, I just also hope that they can continue to like kind of play around with Link's personality and character a bit more because I do miss a bit of that. Like Talking Link. Maybe. I don't know. It could be the done in a good way. The world is not ready for this. But can he have more of a reaction than <laughs> nothing when he sees the most horrifying Dragon Tear memory of all time and literally has... A blank face 
that just doesn't seem possible for someone that is so empathetic and heroic and wants to, you know, like love Zelda. Like it just doesn't seem possible for him to not have any expression at all. Like it's just weird. I, I do think that this will happen. I, th I think that's in that team's DNA to want to change this up. Yeah. In, in this case, they had a specific reason to not. I, I don't think they're making another game in this world next. I think they're starting it's fresh. Fresh. I mean, I'm not counting any potential like re-releases or DLCs for this. The next full-on game, I think, is going to be completely different. Different art style, different world. Probably. All yeah. of this. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think that is a good call for that. I hope I hope it is. Yeah. I hope it is. They've, they've really gotten, I think, all they can out of this world, honestly. So they need to build something else. Tales of Link. Wow. Well, is next. Ever since the arrival of the PS5 and Xbox Series X and S, a small number of third-party games have been coming to the Switch via cloud. Since the Switch is reaching the end of its life cycle, and if we are getting an announcement soon for a new Nintendo console, do you think those same games will get ported to the new Nintendo console physically and onto the eShop natively? I understand reluctantly that cloud gaming is likely the future, but we are still not ready for it. This is a transitional point for Switch and the next console that can be highly annoying. Um, if things are ported over or not, if, they, mm. if there's going to be something like is it is e it powerful enough to is run this game? Enough? Yeah. Is, is is that going to be a seamless? transition a seamless experience for you if you already own a cloud version of something are you going to have to jump through hoops to get those cloud games onto your next system that is a huge question mark and i don't have a lot of confidence that they'll get it right honestly so what what part of it will they not get right i just feel like that their nintendo has always had sort of a issue and um not a lot of like focus on like online gaming and cloud gaming and like you know even having like an eShop that functions. Um, I feel like that's never been a high priority for them. So I feel like that might be if they're really, you know, preoccupied with other things launching a new console, like that might fall to the wayside. And so you're saying if you owned a, a, a cloud game, it would not carry over. Is that what you're saying? Oh yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, I think it's gonna be like. There's going to be like some issues with that. Yeah, I mean, this is like the lowest of low priorities, honestly. Because like saying. all yeah, five people that bought those. Are... I mean, you 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 could argue that it's easy because you just need like whatever little program it's running on to just be available on the other thing. But I think the question here that's interesting is like, you know, is it, so the next system will probably not have the power of the whatever the sony and the xbox system at that time is sure but it does you know give you another window to try and get some of those games over like like for the first couple years of switch like yeah people found ways to bring those games over the reason the cloud games exist is like some companies like don't want to put in the work or they don't think it's possible technically to bring those games over I love games like that where it's like we really challenged ourselves and we found a way to make Doom work or The Witcher 3. I know. It's kind of crazy how they do that, and how they can do that. I think those games sold well. I think people understood, like, this is what it is. It's not going to be, like, 4K beautiful, but it's cool that it works. Like, I will go out of my way to buy those games. Yeah. And, it, like, I, I played through the, all of The Witcher 3 on that. So, and a lot of those games were, were games that people were saying, like, oh, you'll never be able to get a game like this. Mm -hmm. So I think people continually surprise themselves with like what you could do if you really thought about it and put the right resources to it. Yeah. So I don't know if they will just re-release those games or if they'll just move on to new games that they want to bring over. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of an interesting point where the Nintendo system is always weaker and now they seem to be launching mid-generation for these other systems. Yeah. So yeah, the timing is a little off this, now. This 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 is always the Nintendo challenge of and this was something that that you know Nintendo was justifiably concerned about when we were there. It's like we need to keep third parties bringing stuff over even though the power is not there. Mm -hmm. We need to give them other reasons to bring these games over and find ways avenues whether it's creativity on the development side or this cloud gaming stuff that that you know is a solution for them yeah i think the cloud gaming stuff has really slowed down because people realize there's not much of a interest in it right now yeah. but i don't know if they if they get a better cloud system in place um i think i think nintendo realizes that's a 
intriguing future. Do they? An intriguing future, possible. I mean, how far in the future are we talking about? I don't know, but at least they. Ooh. I don't. I don't see them seeing any of the cloud stream, cloud gaming, streaming, online stuff as a priority still. Well, I'm not saying for first party, but I mean they have a cloud solution on the system. It's something. Okay. So yeah. Yeah, that's a t that's a tough one. I, <clears throat> I definitely don't think that that's top of mind for them. Sneezkov, Pikmin Sneezkov is next. Hey, Kit and Kristen. Now that you have gained the fame. Oh, the fame. Oh, the fame. Of being, quote, the ex-Nintendo staff duo who run a YouTube channel. Have you considered taking part in reality TV shows? Like Whoa. Big Brother, for instance. What is Big Thanks. Brother? I don't, I've never watched that show. What is Big Brother? I don't know. That's one of the real, like, original reality shows. I don't know what that is. I think it, does it have to do with somebody watching you all the time? Yeah, there's, like, cameras, like, everywhere. It's like, you live in this house. Okay. I remember this, like, when Survivor was just coming up. Like, Big Brother was, like, the counterpoint to that. Okay. I think it might be bigger in Europe I than see. it is here. But it felt like an extension of the real world. I love the real world. Where, But it's, like, more, like... Uh, more like, cam more hidden cameras. But also, like, hidden. I think, like, everybody in the real world was, like, the same age. There was, like, early 20s. Like, I think there's a bit more age ranges in Big Brother. I see. How do you know so much about Big Brother? I think I watched an episode once and, like... The, around the same time Survivor, when, when reality TV was like taking okay. off. I, I don't think I've ever watched a single okay. episode of Big Brother. So are you that. going on Big Brother is the question. I guess not because that, that doesn't sound appealing to me. The, the reality show that I would love to go on, and we actually know someone that went on this reality show, and I have heard some horror stories about it, but it does seem fun still, is The Amazing Race. Oh. We should totally go on The Amazing Race. Who do we know that did that? Uh, Strawberry Seventeen, Megan. Oh, really? She, she did went that? with her dad. Oh, oh, it's adorable. Wow, you should watch that season. It's great. We know people who've been on Survivor too. We have. Yeah, yeah. we do know people that have yeah. been, been on Survivor. I would not go on Survivor. That seems really hard. Dirty. I wouldn't be able to survive. <laughs> <laughs> it's too dirty. I think we do really well on the Amazing Race, don't you? Okay. We both travel pretty often. I, I only know the the very basic premise of the Amazing Race. We're good at puzzle. <laughs> oh, one of us is uh, good at puzzle solving. Yeah. I think, but it's, it's, it's always duos, right? It's always duos, yeah. and it's like very gamey. Like okay. you go to different countries and you do different challenges. So this show is still going. Yeah, I watch it still. It's these, good. These it's fun. reality shows like never stop. This is a fun one because you get to like see other countries, yeah. and you learn like th their like customs. Like they went to like Switzerland and learned how to yodel. They went to like Italy and learned how to like carve a statue yeah. or like what. I think we'd right. be good at that. <clears throat> so this is not uh, something that I have thought that. about either, but. When we were at Nintendo, I thought like, oh, like if we did a reality show of like the run up to an E3, that could be really interesting. Oh, Obviously so something we would yeah. never, ever, ever, ever do. But yeah. it was like the stuff that happens. You have no, you is, will not believe this. Is inherently happens. dramatic and dramatic. interesting. Yeah. It's and, like the office, but like right. for games. Nutso version. <laughs> yeah, and when, nut, and we're, the we're, nuts version. We have talked about like when the next Nintendo Direct happens, maybe we do something that is like a mini reality style, like what we do to get ready yeah. for a Nintendo Direct. a lot Direct that goes on. Now that we are content creators. Yeah, we'll film our whole life for you. Right. Tomato that noodles could, and all. That could be, if that, sound, if that sounds interesting, let us know. Because yeah. that's something we have also We'll big brother about. ourselves. We'll just put a, turn a camera on right, for right. like a whole, the whole week yeah. or whatever. Our yeah. last question is from Wario Tush. While I didn't really get into the game, it just wasn't for me. I really love the art style of Yoshi's Crafted World. Would you be into different Nintendo franchises putting out a game in this style? Maybe a 2D Zelda that takes place on a kid's RPG table with dungeons made of cardboard or a Mario game with platforms and mountains made of random stacked toys or a Luigi's Mansion in a backyard haunted house. Yeah, I loved... Um... The art style of Yoshi's Crafted World. Yoshi's Woolly World is another one that was there so good. Surprisingly, been a lot of games with this yeah. art style. So Kirby's Epic Yarn. Kirby's Epic Yarn. Mm -hmm. Kind of like the majority of Nintendo Land yeah. was in. It was a little bit of a crafted this style, style, too. Yeah, and, and some of the newer, you know, like the Paper Mario game had that construction paper feel to it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I love the style. I think it's so much fun. I would love to see just like more different art styles represented in games. And Nintendo does a good job of this already. I mean, we were talking about in a recent Zelda video that, you know, the, the art style Breath of the Wild is really inspired, or in Tears of the Kingdom is really inspired by like impressionist paintings and like, paint, you know, like really traditional painting styles. 
So yeah, I would love to see them like play around with more art styles. I was thinking a really cool Luigi's Mansion game oh. would be like with shadow puppets. Oh, that is interesting. And have cool. that be like the Haunted Mansion where it's like a sh yeah. you do a lot of things with like shadows. Okay. I went to a shadow puppet show in China. <laughs> it was really cool. <laughs> it was really, really fun. All right. All right. Yeah, and there were all these like really intricately like hand card, wow. like hand card paper I'm shadow in on that. Puppets. Yeah. That so like any other like very interesting different art style, there's so much out there. I think it would be awesome. First of all, I need a Kirby's Epic Yarn sequel immediately. Oh, we, we, I miss the little prince, the little blue guy. What's his name? Uh, prince Fluff, I believe prince is his name. Prince Fluff! Second of all, to your point, I think they, it feels like they hit a wall of like, what can we do gameplay wise with this? Yeah. So like Kirby's Epic Yarn had like, you know, do the zipper, pull the string. The, the, and you use do the, the lasso. lasso. Yeah, but I love that. But as those that. games went on, it felt like they kind of hit the limit of like yeah. gameplay wise, what can we do? So yeah. I'd want to see them come up with some new ideas. So yeah. it's not just the visual, but there's some game integration. Yeah. So yeah. I think your idea is great. Yeah. I think any other art, like go to the museum. <laughs> Actually, we took Mr. Anima to the museum because right. he wanted to like get inspired. And that's where you can find a lot of, I think you can find a lot of like different sources for art stuff mm -hmm. that could be really interesting, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Let's see a Luigi's Mansion shadow puppet game. Yeah. That'd be great. So that's the news. That's not the news. That's the questions. Excuse me. <laughs> that's the questions which came after the news. The news. <laughs> it's all Whoops. the news. Whoops. All right, in other news, we have to shout out some wonderful superstars. Let's get started with Aaron Hash. And Ben Icorn. Maru Mayhem. Eigen Verse. Kiss My Flapjack. Mike Chin. Mr. Rogers. Roy Eschke. Switching It Up, Underscore. Safazon. The Shark Among Men. VGM Life. Link, the Hero of Winds. Angela Bycroft and her Pig Molly. Turbocharged Nerd. Thomas O'Rourke. Kyle LaBeouf. Christopher Lara. And Simon. Hooray! Right. We're not speed running. No, we stopped. We're, we, we have to we stop. We failed. We failed. We've we said people's over three name times. wrong. It's not good. We ran out of continues. We're going to be doing this in a very professional graduation manner. One up club. It is graduation go. season. It is So graduation we can't season. mess it up. Yes. Here we go. A. Ron Burgundy. Adam and Ansley. Ajan Malari. Ale Alejandro. Alexander Pratt. Andrew Yuhas. Astro Dev. Bad Moon Horizon. Ben G. B. Bookum Dano. Brad, SF56. Brooke Obscura. Brookie Kazoo. Bruce Kazoo. Dash. Chelly Squirrel. Christopher Lay. Cozy Tar. Captain Alex. C Roper 17. Daniel Cole. Daniel Phillips. Dachshund. Da Dash. Dolce. Dino Punch. Elite Peach. I. Ooh. Elk 79780. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> as far as 50. Farpree 69. Fairbound. Fernie and Jess Forever. Fox Deploy. Fred Rossi. Frederick Wolf Conradson. Garrett Hallfish. Garth the Wolf. Gartooth. G Sun 101. Ian Shea. Iris Marin. Israel Izzy. J Rando. Jabroni Jones. JBJ. Jeffrey Hernandez. Jerry 92602. Jesse Hernandez. John Responte. Jonathan Rowe. Jordan Collette. Jordan Hemmerly. Joseph DeHayes. Joshua Clements. Juji Fruit. Jess Camtro. Justin Leminger. Kawa 2796. Keith Kwan. Kelp Shake. Kevin Delane. Kilo Kibo. Krisu. Christopia Party With Me. Kyle Gamer Barry Rookie. Kyle Kretzer. Kyler Nelson. Linnell Stickman. Lit. Mad Dog 5981. Marky Man 64. Mega Dragon 101. Megan. Michael Cravens. Mikey. Motomania. Mr. Andy Pong. Mr. Beans and Dip. MSM Poke Gamer. My Tran. Nasir. Nathan Burkhart. Ninja 11. Panda Buns. Paul C. Pace. Paul Gale Network. Prime Factor. Prince Charmless. Reaver. Brain Tech. Renee Rivers. Rick Alvarado. Ryoth One. RJ Kern. Rob Osborne. Rox. Rianetta. Sam Newland. Sharif Jackson. Slowbro. Shrews. Silly Ferret. SJ Sarkey 777. Spicy Munchkin. Seals Trone. Tales of Link. Tefu. Terra Storm. Thomas Alvarez. Tofer Schmofer. Travis Torline. Troopish. Tugs Puppy Bear. Tight. Uh, Tuskoob. Tyler Geis. Vez Vez. Video Game Stupid. Virtual Bot. Wicked Davey. Will Ernst. Will Johnson. Zudaverf. Zelgara. Zapati. And Zroid. Zroid. All right, that was a little bit bad. There was one in there that was a little hard. Elk. Uh oh. Ike. Uh oh. I don't know. Well, that is a show. Don't forget to subscribe to us on patreon.com slash Kit and Krista to keep 
all of this going. If you are watching on video, you can go ahead and subscribe to this Kit and Krista YouTube channel. Give this video a thumbs up and also leave a comment. If you're one of our great audio listeners, you can also subscribe, leave us a five-star rating, and also a written review. Yeah, and don't forget to follow us on the socials. We are on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, all the places. And that's right. it. Off to Summer Game Fest we go. Bye! Bye.